to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, June 12, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. And roll call, please. Mayor Alahuzis. Here. Vice Mayor Banther. Here. Commissioner Sieber. Here. Commissioner Kikta. Commissioner Carr. Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Janet Tonno from uh, Saint, uh, Saints Episcopal Church. If you please stand and remain standing <clears throat> for the Pledge of Allegiance. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in the city of Tarpon Springs the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our commission meeting. This evening, we'll begin with a special presentation to honor Mr. Christopher Steele. Mr. Christopher Steele is a great individual, an outstanding citizen. He is a world-class artist. As an artist, he received many awards for his outstanding accomplishments in painting, including a European Travel Fellowship, the Pennsylvania Governor's Award for Outstanding Accomplishment in Fine Art. He was inducted into the Florida uh, Artist Hall of Fame. His paintings can be found in many museums and private collections, including the Governor's Mansion in Florida and the Smithsonian Institution. In Tampa Bay area, he can, you can find his work in St. Petersburg City Hall, Tampa Bay International Airport, in many hotels on Clearwater Beach, Ruth Ecker Hall, and of course in our city library and the Heritage Museum. Mr. Steele, we'd like to thank you for your ongoing support to our community, and it's a privilege for me and my fellow commissioners to honor you this evening. Just recently, we had the honor with my fellow commissioners to present your beautiful print changing tides to the uh, President of Greece, His Excellency Pavlopoulos, and to the mayors of our sister cities, Kalimnos, Simi, and Halki. They were amazed by the beautiful images of the painting that represents the uniqueness and the beauty, the beauty of our city, and they, were, they thought they were still on the island. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing us to have your friends and share the, uh, the, uh, the work that you, uh, you were able to do with our uh, sister cities, and we're very grateful that you called Tarpa Springs your home. And if you please accept this plaque and the sponge diver that we'll present to you as appreciation from all of us from the city of Tarpa Springs. The plaque reads, in appreciation to the Christopher Steele, for your contributions and continued support to the City of Tarpa Springs Mayor and Board of Commissioners 2018, Mayor Chris Alahuzos, Vice Mayor Panther, Commissioner Sieber, Commissioner Kikta, and Commissioner Carr. So we'd like to present that to you, my friend Chris. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we'd like to present you with <laughs> the sponge diver. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Chris, if you don't mind, we'd like to get on the front and take a picture and a good picture. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, Thank you. Thank you.
When I was in Greece, I got to brag about you a lot. <laughs> of course, of course you can. Of course you can. <clears throat> this is such a great city for an artist to live in. The antique stores provide and find things for me. The restaurants help me with my clients. The Tarpon police, when we have events, there's no way we could handle having those events without their support. We have all kinds of partnerships, um, like at the Heritage Center with Diane and with our local breweries and with our local restaurants. And it is just, oh, I wanted to say tonight that we've been busy with, plant, with projects all over the place. But um, it's my wife and our family's decision that whether we're in a project or not, that we're now going to be open every year um, just to have something to, to have people to come to town because the downtown has just gotten s to be such a great place to visit. So we're committed to being more active in the downtown. So thank you very much. Thank you. We are now going to the commission comments. Vice Mayor Panther. Yes, thank you, Mr. Friend. It, it, it was definitely unique that we got to bring that to the leaders in Greece, something that no other town could bring them. And I was quite jealous. I would love to have one of those pieces in my house or my office. So uh, it, it, it uh, really depicts Tarpon well, and, and uh, I think is a nice small capture of what we have in the Capitol. It's also very proud when I got to visit the Capitol with uh, leadership in Ellis to see Tarpon Springs, basically, uh, along the whole chambers there, there in the house. So you definitely uh, make us proud, and thank you for allowing us to bring those gifts to those leaders in Greece. Thank you. Commissioner Kicked. Thank you. Uh, Chris, your work is just so beautiful, and um, we love to showcase it here in our community. And, and, and as Vice Mayor said, you know, went up to Tallahassee, and we see Tarpon Springs on the walls in, in Tallahassee. That's really, I, I was so proud. And whoever I was with, I'm like, you know, this is our local artist. This is, this is what he does. And, we do have an art, an artsy community, if, we can, if I could say. Um, so I'm happy that you're part of it and um, that you do help bring people to our community because people do want to see your work. And thank you for what you do, and um, I hope to see more things from you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. We're so lucky to have you here, Chris, and uh, not only as a friend, but for all you do and as an artist for our community. And we have your work hanging at the new bistro, too. Which uh, wasn't mentioned, so we're very proud of that. But thank you, and and I appreciate everything you do, and I look forward to any openings that you have, and we'll help you out with that. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, really glad that you chose to stay in Tarpon Springs and expand your studio. Uh, growing up, you were one of our parents' neighbors. My mom would always say, "This famous artist lives just a couple doors over," and I was like, "Okay, great, he's a famous artist." Uh, until I got into college, I really started understanding how great your art was and appreciated your art even more. Um, I echo the same comments. I was able to visit your art in the state capitol, which was impressive to see. Uh, you have so many great works, that, and then you're still choosing Tarpon Springs for your home. Uh, I think that really speaks volumes to the character of Tarpon Springs. Thank you for making this your home base and uh, all the great things that you've done for the city. So I'm happy at the mayor, and we honored you tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any public comments of this item? Here none. Thank you, Chris. Congratulations. <laughs> we are now going to the public comments on the items that will not be discussed tonight. If you have any comments, please come forward. State your name and your address for the record. You'll be given four minutes. Um, I'm going to need more minutes, and Annie um, Samako said that she would give me hers. Yes? That'll be okay. two extra minutes. Then. How many? Two extra minutes. Two? Extra minutes. Okay, this will be a speed read. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're going to be discussing this issue later. I think it's issue 13. I don't know what you're going to be talking about. You're going to be... I, what I want to talk about is six... I have six pieces of the... 
Six pieces of the comprehensive plan, revisions, and amendments, which are before you. I'm talking about that later. Okay, that's what I was wondering whether I speak you don't now need to or talk later. About this now. No, this is for the items that will not be discussed tonight. I got you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Do we have any public comments on the items that will not be going to be discussed tonight? I hear none. Thank you. Uh, we go to the item number one, which is a proclamation. The proclamations on Hurricane Awareness Month. The city of Tarpa Springs, Florida, proclamation. What as Florida hurricane season officially begins June 1st and it's November 30th. And whereas Hurricane Awareness Month was started to spread awareness of the dangers and hazards of hurricanes, being aware is not being prepared, and history has shown that by knowing vulnerability and what actions to take, people can reduce the effects of the hurricane disaster. And whereas we are better prepared than ever before for today's storms, our technology, forecasting, and models have improved, and we have new ways to dis disseminate vital uh, warnings and storm tracking information still is never too early to prepare. And whereas we enter hurricane season, let us renew our commitment to responsibility and let us unite in common purpose to safeguard our families and community. And whereas I call up organizations, schools, media, and residents to share information about hurricane preparedness. And now, therefore, I crystal accuses by virtue of the authority vesting in me as the mayor of the city of Tarpa Springs to hereby proclaim June 2018 as Hurricane Awareness Month. And Fire Chief Young is going to receive the proclamation. If you want to say a few words, you can, or you can wait to your presentation. Thing. He's going to go to this presentation. You want to do your presentation first? Yeah. Sure, we'll do that. Okay. Well, item number two is a uh, hurricane season 2018 fire department presentation. And of course, Fire Chief Young will do the presentation. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, Chief Young. Uh, well, it's that time of year, and it's hard to believe it's already here. It seems like we just got done with this storm, and now we're getting ready for the next season. Um, Last year, we had a little visitor called Irma, uh, made landfall. It's the first storm that's uh, made landfall in uh, this area for uh, quite some time. Pictured up here on the screen is the uh, EOC in, an a in action. It's the first time in my almost 30 years that I can remember the, our emergency operations center being activated where we actually had a storm come in and we had to go through all the processes and all the steps to make sure the city was taken care of. So uh, we did well, and I think the uh, city should be proud of their uh, staff. Uh, they all worked hard for those few days that we were here cramped in that little room. So, and uh, this year uh, we sent a team down to the Governor's Hurricane Conference uh, from multiple departments to uh, get a little more education going and uh, find out what uh, we need to do to make uh, the city even better uh, for this upcoming year. And I was really proud of the team. They all uh, took a lot of classes. They were very uh, proactive in trying to uh, find new classes while they were there and uh, broaden their uh, uh, knowledge in the st of storms. So let's start with a, uh, a disaster plan for your family. Uh, the main uh, thing is it could be life or death, so you need to make sure you're ready. Uh, know how to escape your home. If you stay at home, if there's a problem, you need to know how to get out. Uh, where your family members are going to be, make sure uh, if you have kids, you, you uh, have a meeting place. It's very important because things can get a little chaotic, so make sure if you uh, lose track of them, you always know where you're going to meet with them if you, if you, uh, at the end of the day. Uh, know how to get in and out of the city uh, or your neighborhood if the storm comes through. Having a backup plan of getting out of your neighborhood. Uh, sometimes the routes are uh, closed off for whatever reason. And know what you're going to take with you uh, and where you're going to go. That was kind of the main theme last year because nobody knew exactly what this storm was going to do. It kept changing. 
Uh, I know my wife and I had many conversations. Should we leave? Should she not leave? And uh, so kind of have an idea if you're going to leave, where you're going to go. One thing we did find out is that uh, if you're going to go, try to do it, make plans early and make reservations somewhere where you need to go because they, they were hard to come by if you uh, decide to go too late. We even tried to get her up into Atlanta and they were also, couldn't find any place to stay. Uh, if you need to, you can shelter in place, but make sure you have all the provisions and items that are going to get you through the time. Uh, we don't recommend that you shelter in place by any means. We prefer you to uh, evacuate and uh, get out of harm's way. Uh, something to make sure you all check is your homeowners or renters insurance. Make sure it's up to date and it covers everything that you may need. Uh, start playing the what if game. It's that time. Start saying what are we going to do if it happens and what are we, what's our plans. Make sure you have the adequate supplies. If you decide to leave, what you're going to take with you. And if you're going to shelter in place, uh, make sure you know where you're going to store these supplies. So if something happens, you know exactly where they're at and what you need and where you're going to go get them. Something for a survival kit. Water. Water is the most essential thing. Like uh, last year when the storm came through, uh, some of the water systems were uh, in critical uh, need and we luckily we didn't run out of water but we always want to make sure you have plenty of water just in case uh, the systems go down uh, if you take medications that make you thirsty you want to have a little extra water so usually about a gallon of water a day for person uh, make sure you have enough food for three days if you stay home or if you're on the road make sure you have uh, perishable foods with you uh, something that people don't think about is the, the kitchen uh, supplies uh, can openers uh, I heard one story, somebody got someplace and they had all these cans of food, but they couldn't open them because they didn't bring a can opener with them. So make sure you bring your can openers. Uh, tools, in case you need to uh, work on anything wherever you're at. Uh, screwdrivers, hammers, vice grips are good because they can hold things together. Uh, sanitary supplies, clothing and bedding. Uh, you want to make sure you have a couple sets of bedding if you can get it because you might be in it for quite a while and you might be in some not so nice clean places if you have to leave the area. Uh, flashlights with extra batteries and a battery powered radio is always good to have with you because uh, the TV stations and stuff, cable could go down and radios might be the only way you get some information. Uh, bring your household documents with you that are very important to you. You don't want to leave them at home because if something happens they might not be there when you get back. And then of course specialty items for babies and stuff. Make sure you don't forget about the little ones. Uh, lots of diapers. And of course, cash. You never know if the ATMs are going to work and you might need cash. If you find a store that's open that you might need to buy some supplies and the uh, credit cards machines may not work. And just make sure you adjust your kit uh, based on your own needs. So prepare your home, very important. <clears throat> uh, if you have shutters, you know, make sure they're in working order so you can shutter your windows. Uh, glass, uh, things that break uh, the glass are usually flying debris. So uh, if you have shutters, make sure they work in good condition and don't tape your windows because that's not going to help. Uh, you'll see people that put the big duct tape across your windows. That doesn't, that's not going to stop anything from flying through your windows. All it's going to do is help pick up the big pieces of glass. Uh, check your weather stripping. That's that time to start looking at the weather stripping and caulk around your windows and doors. Make sure it's in good shape so if it does rain pretty hard, you're not getting any water in your home. And check your garage door. If it's time to start thinking about replacing your garage door, do it now. And always look for a garage door that's weather rated. Sandbags. The city does provide sandbags uh, when the storms start getting close. And we uh, have a couple stations throughout the city uh, for residents to go to, usually down at the end of the docks and one over by the uh, water park. So getting your yard ready. Make sure you prune your trees. Make sure you pick up those uh, branches and stuff after you're done because those things can fly around and they will go through the windows or they could hit somebody if they're, somebody's out walking around, hopefully not. Uh, clean your gutters and downspouts. Make sure that they are clean and uh, can take the flow of water when it's raining really hard. Otherwise, the water will back up and cause damage to your roof. And the furniture, all the kids' toys, yard furniture, start bringing those in when you hear that the warnings are coming up. Get them out of the way, put them in the garage. Uh, don't drain your pool, and we recommend that you chlorinate your pool a little bit more, and you can always throw some of the pool furniture in the uh, pool itself. If you don't have room, that way it'll be in the water and won't start flying around. Ready your vehicle. Uh, so if you're going to hit the road, make sure your car's ready. Uh, first aid kits, again, bottled water and food. Uh, basic tool kits, jumper cables or flares are good to have with you. 
uh, flashlights, uh, AC, DC uh, power inverters, so you can plug in your cell phones, uh, anything else that you may able, uh, need to plug in, you'll have that adapter to power your stuff up, and of course, chargers for your cell phones. And uh, a map with the shelter locations is always good to have. Uh, that way, if you decide to go to the shelter, you know exactly how, exactly how to get there. So here's the storm names for this year. Uh, we've already crossed one off. Alberta already showed up a little before this season. Uh, but mm. Luckily, it wasn't too bad, and it didn't affect <laughs> us. So there's the names for this year's storms. Uh, if your name's up there, congratulations. Uh, we'll blame you later. All right, here's the forecast. It's above average season this year. Uh, tropical storms, 12 to 15. Last year we had 17 storms. Tropical storms, six to eight hurricanes. Last year we had 10 storms. And major hurricanes, three to five. We had six last year. So the U.S. named storm landfall, uh, they expect three to four uh, major storms to hit landfall this year. Again, you never know if this is accurate or not. Sometimes in the middle of the season, they'll adjust the number of storms based on the season. I did hear a report the other day that they uh, think maybe this number may be a little high because the uh, Atlantic is still a little cool, and there may be an El Nino developing late in the season, which would be good for us. But uh, we'll have to wait and see if that comes to happen or not. This was an interesting thing I found at the hurricane conference. This is just the cone that you always see on TV. The blue cone was back in 2008. That's what they showed. That's how big a cone they showed. Uh, 2012, it shrunk. And this year's cone is even smaller. Uh, as you can see, the models have gotten so much better over the years that they have really come down to be able to tell you almost exactly where that storm is going to go. Uh, one uh, instructor down at the conference said that that cone there in the next three to four years, the red cone, will be even smaller. That's how much the models have uh, the computers have been able to pick up the data and uh, translate it into what's going to happen. So that's good. It kind of lets us know a little bit more in advance what's going to be going on with us. Uh, storm surge. You always hear about storm surge. Water is the major problem. More than the wind, more people die because of storm surge than any other part of the storm. Uh, so you can see the different levels. Uh, if you're in an A evacuation, it means, and we start evacuating, that means the storm surge could be up to eight feet and up to uh, Evacuation E, you know, we could see water up to 30 feet in the city if that, we ever got to that point. Uh, that would be uh, pretty catastrophic for most of us in the city. So shelters. Uh, we have this middle school out at, uh, uh, on the other side of town there is the shelter. That is not a special needs shelter. So if you have special needs or a family member has special needs, they need medical attention. If they go to a shelter, you'll need to contact the fire department and we will put you on our special needs list. Uh, last year, during the storm, we evacuated about 120 special needs people from the city and took them to a special needs shelter. Uh, the closest pet shelter, uh, according to this, is in Dunedin. I just heard uh, yesterday that they are talking to some of the schools about opening up a few more shelters that will take uh, uh, pets. So that's a good thing. If you have pets, you need to register your pet. They prefer that you register them, make sure they have a kennel, and you'll be need, need to supply all the food and, uh, for the animals while they're there. Uh, you can call that number or go to that website and register your pets, uh, and they'll be taken care of there. So here's some uh, really good stuff. On your cell phone, if you go to your app store and uh, download Ready Pinellas, it's a free app. You can, it'll give you all kinds of information on what's going on in the county. Uh, it'll tell you what evacuation zone you are currently in. If you're standing in Clearwater, uh, it'll tell you what evacuation in your zone you're at. Or it, it'll give you all information of what's happening in the county, uh, updates on the storms and everything else. The Alert Pinellas there, uh, you can actually register for that through Ready Pinellas. What Alert Pinellas is, is a re like a reverse 911 system. Uh, you go on there, you register your phone, uh, and you'll get special alerts that, of things happening, such as uh, uh, through your texting, text messages, or actually a phone call and a voice recording. We have that in the city also, and actually we just used that system uh, when we had the water main break on the other side of town. Uh, we can block off a certain area and let people know what's going on. Uh, we called over 17,000 homes within an hour. Um, to let everybody know what was going on. So it's a great system. You can register yourself uh, through the county, either that uh, website there, or if you download the Ready Pinellas, it has a uh, little link there. You can uh, get 
get that on your phone. It'll actually call your home phone also. And it'll also let you know your evacuation zone, which you should know. It's on your trim notice. And uh, we're putting out maps in all these little uh, other places, the city hall, library, things like that, a public safety facility. If you need a map or a guide, just let us know. We can uh, get you one also. Uh, they redid it this year. It's a little bit nicer, a little easier to uh, read and understand. Uh, like we just received those about a week ago. <coughs> Again, an interactive uh, map on the website, the county's website. If you punch your address in, it'll actually bring up a map and show you where your house is and the evacuation zone and uh, the storm surge information it should be in there also. So preventive measures for utilities. There is some uh, systems in place that if we start getting some flooding waters and stuff like that, the city will start shutting some uh, water lines down to protect the system so when we turn them back on, there won't be any damage to them. Uh, so uh, we will try to get that information out as soon as we start doing something like that through the reverse 911 system so people know that the water is going to be shut down. But that's just a uh, protective measure for the uh, uh, city's water infrastructure. So social media is how we can get a hold of you, let you know what's going on. Uh, the Pinellas County Emergency Management has a Twitter account. If you're on Twitter, uh, also Facebook, uh, Bright House Channel 615. Uh, has information all the time during a storm. And then uh, the city's website uh, and the city's web, uh, Facebook, um, the police, fire, police department's Facebook and the fire department's Facebook, we will be simultaneously putting out information on those sites uh, during the storms and not when we're getting close to what's uh, the storm coming and try to relay as much information as we can. The whole idea is to make sure everybody's informed and make the right decision. So this was Irma. Make sure yourself, make sure you are prepared, uh, especially if you see this coming. Hopefully we won't, but uh, we always want to make sure everybody's safe and uh, can get out of the city if they need to and uh, be safe. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, uh, Fire Chief Young. Thank you for the presentation. And I will thank the team for attending the, uh, the training on uh, 2018 Governor's Hurricane Conference. Uh, I have a question to ask you mm -hmm. in regards to transportation for disabled. Do they need to pre-register with for the what fire now, department? Sorry? Transportation for the disabled people? Yes, they need to, uh, they go, need to call the fire department. Uh, we can get them the forms they need to fill out. Uh, it's a, uh, they're called special needs <coughs> uh, people. These are people that are on oxygen, uh, bedridden, uh, just can't get around or they need extra care if they're at a shelter. Uh, they go to the Dunedin shelter down in uh, the Dunedin Middle School is where the designated special needs shelter is. So we get them there uh, via buses, and uh, we also uh, get them back home once it's safe to come back. Okay. Do you have a vehicle to communicate with them? Let them know that... We will be calling them. Okay. Uh, once we activate that system, uh, we manually start calling them and letting them know. It goes by evacuation zone. So if they're in an A evacuation zone and the evacuation is only for A residents, we'll start calling all those people on the phone and letting them know that we'll be uh, setting up to come and get them so they can start preparing. Thank you. Thank uh -huh. you. Are there any commission comments, questions? Commission Super. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's, it's great that you, know, you, you do this every year and this, our website has been updated with this information. Is that correct? Our city website or I, not yet? I don't know if Judy has put it on there yet or not, but uh, I'll check that tomorrow. I'll make sure. I know. I look at it every once in a while. Right. I know it's on there, but I don't know. I'm sure she has. I'm sure okay. she has. Um, like last year with Irma, I had people texting me and calling me and asking me what evacuation zone they were in. So I remember calling Mark and saying, is that on our website? Because people don't know what evacuation zone they're in. So it's, it's important that you know that. Yeah, and the, the map I don't think will be on there. But uh, again, on there now. I would refer them to get to that app. <laughs> Yeah. If they have a cell, cell phone that they can look it up or they can call the fire department uh, during before the storm and we can start looking it up. It's on there now. It is. Because people couldn't get through yeah. the Pinellas County uh, The Pinellas website, County was so, down. Oh, was it down? Uh, with Irma last year, we, we, <laughs> we, uh, we had that. Uh, we had to do that. But, yeah, thank you. It's, it's, it's uh, great to inform Good, everyone. Thanks. And thanks for the presentation. Sure. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I know there's... A lot of people watching on TV and online as well. Um, sandbags are great, but if you don't put a protector of plastic 
behind the sandbags, the water is going to come right through because there's air gaps and it's porous. So if you use sandbags, make sure you use a thick garbage bag below it and raise it up the side of your doors as well. Um, I know it's saved me uh, in the past you doing that. Yeah, so. sandbags can work if you use them that way. If you just put them up, you know, they're not quite as effective. So plastic bags always just an extra barrier. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Chief, thank you for this presentation. I look forward to it every year. There's always some little new information that's brought to us, and I do appreciate it. Um, what Commissioner Sieber was saying about the um, evacuation zones, I was, you know, we were getting texts and phone calls and stuff. I think Pinellas County, there were so many people looking for their evacuation zone, like at the last minute, that the, the site went down. So I think ours was too small to really see, because ours was up. There was we had access somewhere on our website and it was just kind of small to see so hopefully we can supply a better map that's a little clearer we can look more. into that i'm assuming that the county went down because it was probably just overwhelmed yeah that's down. what i'm that's, so what that's I why told. we recommend trying to find that out now so everybody knows what they're doing yeah but um you know i'm in thank god in a high and dry place and i had like 12 people at my house and um we boarded up and when you put that last board up you can't see outside anymore. So we waited to the last possible minute to do that um, because you don't know what's happening outside. All you hear is wind going and things flying, and, and, it's, and it is scary. Um, but, you know, I just made sure before everybody got going in their own directions, this is, this is it. The water's here. If, the, water go, if uh, the running water happens to go out, this is what we do. Food is here. This is here. Supplies are here. Uh, power goes out. Just let everybody know the, here's, here's the, you know, flashlights and candles and whatever and just just so there's not a panic because you never know what's going to happen the roof could fly off so you just don't know but um and keep calm uh that's all i can say about that but it was a scary situation last year so i hope we don't have to go through that again and when it came to our um that sun is right in my eyes the EO, our command center our staff did a fabulous job I, I can't say it enough times. Our staff did a phenomenal job. We had volunteers from our, our city staff. We had our police and fire all there. Thank you. It's she and, went dark. Um, and I got to see the command center. I came, came up once or twice, and I, I was so impressed. And I think we won an award for that once, didn't we, Mark? We won an award for our, our command center. So again, thank you, and um, thank you for the commission and, and everybody that supports that and all the money that it costs and time and it just like I said we did a phenomenal job a lot of people don't understand what goes behind that um, but again thank you for this uh, presentation thank you. yes thank you and and uh, don't want, and uh, thank you chief I, 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 I've always said you, you did a very good job uh, like half a week into your uh, position uh, <laughs> yeah. three days yeah. <laughs> I think, as Commissioner Kick has said, you know, I think tarp and shine in the EOC process, and that's impressive. Being that that group really had a, had any any dry runs since you know, oh five oh six. I'm not sure much of that group was in the city at that at, at, at that time. And we learned we were on those countywide calls, just how just how disorganized a lot of other not not just cities but organizations were. So I felt proud that Tarpon, uh, uh, though though did as well as, as we did. Uh, you covered a, a lot of great points. Um, you know, I think the biggest lesson I learned, and I'm huge into prepping and preparedness, is that um, it's not so much the storm that's the bad part. It, it, it's it's it, it's 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 the week afterwards when you have no power, no access to quality food, etc. So I I, re I really do encourage people. You know, unless you live in a non-evac zone and you you have hurricane shutters and supplies, if you have the ability to leave, you should. And and you should plan early on how to do that. I've already told my wife and daughters that 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 was their first and last storm, so uh, they'll be going to their brother's house or her brother's house up up in uh, Louisiana. He he's far away from the water, and uh, because that's that's not uh, comforting. Uh, but uh, uh, I think um, we need to increase. We need to encourage more people to like the city's Facebook page. I know Facebook was a main outlet during the storm, and uh, I think that as much as we can get out there. Uh, on Facebook as possible, and then Twitter because that can be accessed when there's little bandwidth as well. But you you cover great points. I encourage people to 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 prepare early. Many of the supplies you talked about you can get on Amazon for for a pretty cheap. That's where I get mo most of mine from. 
And for the water, you you don't have to buy all like a bunch of bottled water. I I, I keep about a hundred of those bottles on hand, but I I also buy um five of those five gallon jugs like like for the water cooler. Then you just can get a little hand pump on Amazon that that that, that can that can, that that can pump the water out, and that's all the water you you would that that uh, that you would need. But um again, you should know your zone. But unless you live in a in, in a fortified home in a in a non evac zone. Saying you're well, I'm a B and not an A. That that that's a hair difference. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to have a plan and get out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Hear none. Thank you. Next item is Gateway Signs Public Art Committee, and the presentation will be given by the uh, Vice Chair Dali Batikiotis. Good evening. I'm Darlene Vatti Kiotis. I live at 538 West Cedar Street, our new home in Greektown. And I am here tonight representing the Public Art Committee as the Vice Chairman. I'd like to say that Sherry Orr is enjoying the wonderful Maine weather the entire summer. So she has asked in her absence for me to address the group. I'd like to just give a little bit of background. As you recall, we were tasked as a group to come up with some alternative gateway signs. By that I mean areas within the community that address into Tarpon Springs. And you have in your backup um, particular shot slides that we'll go through today. These are basically design suggestions. Nothing's been decided on, of course, because you haven't made that decision. But these are just um, design suggestions. I'm here with members of our committee, and I appreciate their attendance and support tonight. And I'd also like to say that during the course of our meetings in February and March, we were each tasked by the chairman to go into the internet and look at various communities around the country that would perhaps be the size of Tarpon Springs, but not necessarily, and see what sort of gateway signs they have to their particular communities. Some of them were um, much more elaborate, concrete, um, different sorts of things. But what we've got for you tonight is sort of a, um, a mix of different uh, approaches, and we'd like your feedback. And as I say, these are suggestions at this particular time. Let's see if I can do this. All right. All right. As you see in the sh slide here in front of you, these are the um, what we call the gateway signs. These are entrances to Tarpon Springs, both from the north as well as the south, and also coming off of US 19 and then alternate 19. I think you all are familiar with that. And on the left hand side, you see what is our current signage, um, most especially there at uh, US 19 at Tarpon Avenue. We did a little bit of history, and we really couldn't identify the time by which those were first put up. Um, but they, they suffice for now, and I think that, that we are looking, with the suggestion of Commissioner Carr and some of the others, to sort of update those and, and, and have a different approach to them. I am not a techie. All right, in this first slide, you can see we have um, incorporated the paneling and the, and the black trim, as it says, to complement the new street signs that I know the economic development, some of those offices within City Hall are working on as well. This is a vertical sign, and as you can see, it has our characteristic sponge diver helmet. But when I showed them to my husband, whose, husband, whose father was a diver, he said, that's a Mark V U.S. Navy diving helmet. That's not a sponge diver helmet. And I said, okay, explain the difference. And the difference is the munions across the front. They would not be a sponge divers covering on their glass. U.S. Navy divers were dealing with steel and other objects in the water, so they had to protect that glass covering so that they could be safe in what they were doing. Divers need that clarity. They need to be able to see out through that area. So in any design that we do, those munions will be gone, the cross-hatching. 
But this, um, this was one of the more um, attractive uh, designs that we as a committee thought would be representative. And I believe Clearwater's got something similar as far as a vertical sign that would attract attention. And of course we um, want to compliment. And the, the next one is very similar and it actually would go in line with our historical buildings, the cultural center, city hall, some of the other buildings that we have around town that, that have that red, red brick. And I think it would tie very well into, into our community. Oops, sorry. This particular sign is, um, shows a fish. Now I know that one of you commissioners was especially interested in having a fish on it. We're not quite sure that this would be something you want to approach, but it is an option. Once again, the vertical sign. And on the right, as you can see, that's a bit of a ledge. And that particular logo or that marking to the right would be something that could be temporary as far as being up for a year or a two year. And when the city receives other accolades and other awards, we could change that out. Right at the moment, USA Today has not given us authorization, although we did win that wonderful, um, most historic city. But that would be the, um, the place that would most likely, because there is a bit of a rise in a ledge, so you could put different sorts of uh, announcements or whatever on a year-to-year -year basis, such as this. You'll see it here, best historic small town in the USA. Um, once again, the, the vertical, signage with, with the fish. This one just brings a little bit of a flavor of the modernistic to it. Again, I asked my husband and he wasn't quite sure what this was. But, um, and since there are no waves in the Gulf of Mexico. But anyway, this gives you one other approach if you wanted to kind of be a little more artistic in, in your views. Those are waves to the right side. Once again, another option. Um, and as I said, members of the committee did a lot of canvassing on the internet throughout the country, and these were sort of the best that, that came forward um, to suit our particular community. The helmet, the historical small town representation. Again, with the fish. And I will be happy to answer any questions or discuss any of these designs. And we are open to any kind of suggestions you may have as far as um, going forward as a committee on this project. Mr. Vesicuris, thank you. Our, thank You're you and all the uh, committee members for your work you do. You're welcome. And uh, thank you for uh, working for your efforts to beautify our city. Um, Consistency to me is very important. I think all of them, it should be the same. All the gateway signs, it should be the same throughout the city. That's our plan. Yeah, but I, I do like the, um, the helmet design one, the first one that you have, with the modification of the helmet that you were talking about. Yes. All right, now I've lost it. Oh, we're into the hermit. Okay, I know which one you're talking about. That's the first one. Can you get back to this, Denise? When I was in the Navy, I had people doing this for me, so I apologize that I'm not very techy. Yes, that was our favorite as well as a committee. Yeah. We like that, the, the helmet. Um, the, the fish on occasion looks sort of like a dead fish on a piece of wood. Because the helmet. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a little, <laughs> but we wanted to approach, and the commissioner knows which one he's interested in. But well, the helmet represents our culture and our Absolutely. Uh, heritage that we have in Tarpa Springs. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, that was the, that was the one that would, would take the vote of our group as well. I told you I shouldn't touch that machine. You do it, you do it. Right here, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, I think, do you prefer the darker brick? Ours, our thought was the next slide with the darker brick because it matches the historical buildings in town, but either or certainly... Either brick to me is sure. good. I think it's, a, good. You know, it's good, but uh, I like to have the special designation on below the helmet if it's possible. 
you know, the one for uh, the best small town. As opposed to the opposite side? E either way, as okay. long as we have it there, that will be nice. As soon as we get authorization from USA Today, and the Chamber is working on that since they were the guiding force on this, um, that will certainly be on there because that's, that's the monumental. Whatever we decide, we need to have it, you know, uh, to have them all the same. It, it Correct. Be consistent throughout the city. Absolutely. Because now we have so many different types, so we need to get away from You're that. right, and some of them, like on South Pinell, on uh, Alt-19 down south by Klosterman, that one was destroyed in a storm, and um, they're, they're just not as attractive as they needed to be for our beautiful city. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Vice Mayor Panther, you have a comment? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for all you do and your, and your <laughs> committee. You have, you have skill sets I have none of, so... I often yield to my colleagues on artistic designs. But I will say, I agree with the mayor. I do like the vertical signs. I think it brings attention when one's driving the rest. The other, like um, like the tarpon design, uh, you know, four and three, they're, they're, they're nice, but it just looks like a sign, you know. Um, so I like the vertical signs. It draws attention. I did like the artsy one, helmet design three, but you said, I guess you want to keep it all the same. I wouldn't put that, like, all around the town, maybe if there was a... You know, like a the one with the waves is that the one you're talking about? Well, right. That would be appropriate, but I'm 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 not married to that. But I wouldn't want to put that on every entrance. But if there was an artsy spot, we 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 wanted to put a sign in. But anyway, I like the vertical signs, and I like the ones where we can put um uh like a like a placard like like you discussed that we can swap in and out. Yes. Uh, I do prefer the helmet over the fish. I mean, the the fish is fine. I, I just keep thinking about that fish at Walgreens where you press the button and it, it talks. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I totally understand where you're coming from on that. So, um, and, uh, but the helmet, I think, is indicative of our heritage and, and, and more than just yes. uh, the fish. So, yeah, I think you, 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 all, did, you all brought some great, uh, some, some, some great options to us. So, yeah, I, I definitely like the, uh, the vertical with the helmet and one that we can place a sign on, uh, like, a, like, a, like a placard. Besides that, the color of the brick and the options within those the vertical signs, I'll leave that up to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your comments. Commission Carr. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Um, thank you for bringing these back. And uh, I know You're this welcome. is a passionate uh, item of mine that I asked that you all look at. And thank you for taking the initiative and doing this. Uh, I do like the vertical ones a lot. I agree with what the mayor and vice mayor and what you've said also. Yes. Can you give me an idea of how tall these would be? Do you have any thoughts about that yet? Well, we haven't actually gotten to the details of them. We're just sort of getting at the design concept right now. We certainly would want them to be expressive enough on the highway that you could see them, but, but not in a position where they would be, you know, dangerous if something blew them down. Yeah. Well, to me, this says, like, you're in Tarpon Springs, but it's not going to, like, knock you over like you're coming in the right. Tarpon Springs, right? But it's a stately. It's really, really good looking, I think, overall. Um, if I had the choice between the brick or the rock, I think that that might be a good decision maybe on the final vote to come back and give us a couple options. Right. Uh, a few suggestions I would make is looking at the, the lettering of Tarpon Springs. Um, the RO plant has the lettering it's more of like a block lettering and we can change um, any of that that's very um the, the classier look um the coloring of maroon is i'm okay with that still uh or if it would just be one of the other colors um that matches if it's a copper that might match the metal that's behind the helmet mm -hmm. uh, or something along those lines but i think the block lettering would look a lot better than the current lettering that's on here i think another important aspect is to make sure that we have the Date the city was established, established in uh, 1887. Yeah, so um, that's a good suggestion. Thank you for that. I think that one's important. Uh, I, I know I was talking to a couple of the members earlier about the metal if it's just going to be a, a piece of copper, if it's going to be a, a, just a regular metal that's a dark the metal color of the helmet you're talking about behind it. Oh, that's, okay. That's sitting in behind the helmet in front of the stone or the brick. I, I do think it would be neat to see copper there. It's a, a, a natural metal, right, that would patina over time and mm -hmm. have some character to it. Uh, that, that would be nice to see as well. Um, I, I was initially, I mean, I, I said, let's go ahead and do a tarpon. We're tarpon springs. We're not sponger springs. Um, I do think that the, the helmet does look really well. 
in this design though overall uh, i'm not against putting a fish on it but i would again lean towards rest commission it sounds like they're leaning more towards a helmet right now already um i don't have to live or die on a, a fish or a helmet <laughs> on our front sign um but i do think it's important to have something that's stately and that it, it really makes an impact when you come into tarpon springs um I do agree with the other comments that it's important to have some type of placard that could be removed and added on. Uh, we have a, our like our high schools, for example, we have a lot of great like our band gets nationally recognized year after year. We Absolutely. have occasionally a soccer team or a baseball team or football team that goes to states or state finals, and uh, I think it's good to recognize those types of people in the community also, and that's a great area to do that as well. That was our thinking behind that, being able to make that an interchangeable disc or, or some sort of a placard that could be, you know, after a year, or if we have the same distinction next year, or some other thing that would come forward. You know, the exciting thing about, it was great that we got the recognition of best historic small town in the country. Yes. But before that, we had two other recognitions within the month and a half of each other as one of the top, uh, was it Retirement Magazine? named Tarpon Springs one of the top Gulf Coast communities to retire in. And then Expedia named Tarpon Springs one of the best cities to visit. That's visit outside the country, but not actually leave your country as Greece. Uh, so those are other things that would be neat. I, mean, I think this is the best recognition that we can do. Um, following up, though, and my request is we want to look at also um, signage. And I've mentioned this to the city manager last week when we rode around town, is signage looking at the signage for the public buildings and then also our parks. And I do think these other designs are very nice, um, but I do lean towards the vertical ones as more of the ones that I would prefer to see in our gateway. I think like the design, helmet design number four, or the tarpon design number three would be good to see something like this on our public buildings or something along those lines. You're pulling in a similar um, brick or stone and it's still a permanent structure that's not going to rot, that's made out of wood that, like we have today. So, My understanding, just, Commissioner, is that the city does have a group that's working on this. Um, the city manager could address that. But I know that they're looking at signs in the historic area and then other signage around the community that would fall under their purview as opposed to public art when it comes to building attachments. Okay. Thanks again for bringing this, up, uh, bringing this back before us. Uh, I think you guys did a great, timely, you did it quick. Uh, I think you did a great job. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dolly. Uh, I know I've been asking about gateway signs for four years now, so I'm glad that we're we're finally looking at them. And, and um, I, I think it's a good idea to have the year that Tarpon's established, so I, I like that idea. I differ a little bit differently on the designs because I really like the welcome to Tarpon Springs. Uh, I think that is something that uh, I think would be nice to see coming into Tarpon Springs. So I like design number four. Uh, of course, with the helmet, but um, so I'll go with you know whatever the other commissioners decide. But uh, I just like the welcome to Tarpon Springs, so I, I like that one the best. So, uh, but like I said, I'll go with whatever the other. Thank you. Decide. Thank you. Well, as I said, these are design suggestions. We were hoping that you would like one of these that we brought forward, and if not, we were prepared to go back and scratch our heads and do continue research. But um, with your direction, you know, we can proceed and get some of the details as far as sign, materials, and certainly working with, uh, with the city on, on placement and that sort of thing. And I think you have to look at two different ones because the large vertical ones, obviously, but some of our gateways where we may have to get some right away or some permissions, the sign like Helmet 4 may have to go. And I, when you show the map, there's a couple of those places we may not so you probably need to do the main one for the main entrance and the smaller, where we may have a smaller piece of land or have to get an agreement, we might want to do something that matches that, but in the style of Helmet 4, right. for a couple of those locations up there, we might have to go with this type of sign. So that that's great. also in consideration too. We might have to use a combination. Yeah. We'll, we'll certainly research all of that. Ideally, we'd like to be consistent with each of the signs so that it would carry through in the community. But if there are restraints as far as space or, you know, trees or whatever might be the case, we'll, uh, we'll certainly uh, accommodate each of those. Thank you. Um, thank you for bringing this back to us. It is, it's, uh, I love the designs. Uh, thank you. You've done a great job with this. Um, it'd be nice to have some conformity, conformity with, within the city. Um, you know, it's the signs we have right now. <laughs> I'm not going to say a lot, but I don't know who designed them, but 
uh, we need something new. Um, also, uh, maybe, I don't know if we can put uh, Tree City USA on here as well, because I know we have our little signs that, throughout the city that say Tree City USA, if we could put that. We'd have to research that and find out if there's any limitations as far as, you know, authority to do that or, or you know, space on the sign itself. Okay. Um, and I do like the, um, the vertical sign uh, with the sponge helmet. And, but I was thinking also, you know, on, on 19, just past classroom and going uh, north, there's a sign there. So maybe we might have to go with a smaller sign in that area. And the one on alternate 19 that got destroyed, right. we might have to go with the smaller sign because of, you know, height restrictions and, and, Certainly. and all that. So I don't know if the design number four would fit, because um, I'm not sure how big, you know, you're looking at, or something like the helmet design three in those areas um but if we want to be everything to conform then the helmet design four would would be probably the better option but um yeah i like to see that maybe on 19 where a classroom in it i don't know i mean i don't like i said i don't know the height or anything but um just something to think about we're definitely gonna have to put something like something different than that the first one we were looking at uh, the helmet design number one because of those areas are going to be restricted. We'll have to just investigate all of that with the city's um, assistance Codes. to find out, you know, like like the city manager said, right of ways and, and distances, things of that sort. So, but but we'll certainly work closely on that regard. But yeah, I, I think these are great. I, you know, I'm open to either the, the light color brick or the regular brick, what, whatever. Um, but I, I like that design. So, um, with the correct helmet on it. <laughs> yes, the correct helmet. We've got to do that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all your work on this. I You're very it. welcome. I appreciate your fine comments. Oh, thank you for the presentation. We go into the public comments. Do we have any public comments on this item? Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any public comments on this item? Here none. Thank you very much. We go to uh, <coughs> consent agenda. <coughs> Item number four is satisfaction release of liens. Number five is the attorney fees for uh, Johnson and Jackson invoice 1893, 2695, and 2696. Number six is a special event. Number four, uh, A, 4th of July picnic in the park, July 4th, 2018. And B is the Independence Day fireworks display, July 4th, 2018. Number seven is the award file, number 180125NRS, single source purchase of, of radio equipment. Number eight is the award bid, number 180111BRS, replace six roll ups sectional doors for uh, the public safety building. Number nine is to ratify an increase in renew file number 170109. CCM utilizing U.S. Communities Purchasing Alliance contract number 15 JLP 023 for uh, air conditioning products, installation services, and related products and services. Number 10 is the award file number 180132 CJJ Industrial and Commercial Supplies and Equipment through Florida State contract number 31160000018 ACS. And number 11 is the award file, 180136, CJJ Technology Services, Solutions and Related Products through the uh, U.S. Communities Purchasing Alliance contract number 44006645. Any items that you'd like to pull? Uh, just have a quick question on 6B and then... 6B? <clears throat> yeah. And then number 11, I want to pull. Number 11, you want to pull. You want to ask the question on number 6B? Yes. Uh, is Fred Howard Park have free parking for the beach during 4th of July? Do we have that worked out with the county? It will be after 6, I believe. Yeah, it will be free after 6. After 6 o'clock. So I, mean, I missed that in the back. I don't know if we could press the county for that. Well, fireworks go off about 9. I understand that, but it's a national holiday, and the fact that our county decided to come to Tarpon Springs and charge our residents to park in our 
Beach is always still frustrating to me. There's two county parks that charge parking. Uh, one's Fort DeSoto and one's Tarpon Springs. I know uh, Sunset Beach has seen a lot more of a increased traffic because of that. But with a national holiday, I think that's something that we should reach out to as a commission, to the county commission, and ask for a, a reduction during that time. I know it's a moneymaker for them, but at the same time, it's a national holiday where we're celebrating America. And uh, I think it would be appropriate for our residents to be able to, to park for free throughout the day there. So, well, again, it. we negotiated that and we got six o'clock. We can certainly, if you say we can, you can work on it next kind year. of the late, yeah. the late point of the process. Um, so, okay. Thank you. Well, since we're talking about item number six on special events, I'd like to say that uh, the 4th of July picnic in the park. Mm -hmm every year has been sponsored by uh, the waste management. They, they pay for everything and to uh, give the opportunity to the people in Tarpa Springs to have a great time for 4th of July. Um, any other questions on the items 4 through 11, uh, excuse me, 4 through 10, we pull in number 11. No. Are there any public comments on this item? You're not, I need a motion for four through four to ten. 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 You got yes. it? Yes. Uh, have ten. second and roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahusis? Yes. Thank you. We are now going to the item number 11, Commissioner Carr. Thanks. Uh, I would like to ask um, the city manager, one of the chiefs, to help us out with this. Uh, it's a significant amount of money that's being spent on technology, which I feel is important, and it's being used for the EOC. Um, I, the fire chief presented earlier on the importance of the EOC and being prepared. Uh, I know multiple commissioners asked the city manager and the, the chiefs at the time to come back and let us know what items that need to be purchased to have a uh, streamlined EOC and something that can really protect um, our residents. So i just, just like some more information on this. Um, I would like to point out a couple things before this is brought up to talk about maybe what other, like for instance, there's some TVs purchases, and I know that the EOC might be open once every couple years, or it might be open up multiple times in the same year, but just to have a better idea of how they could be utilized throughout the year instead of just sitting with dust collecting on them. Um, and I would like to point out for future quotes that are presented to the board for backup, um, we've got three different items that aren't really clarified that I had to ask for clarification on for installation uh, of the products from the cart that's going to hold the mainframe of this 84 inch computer um, installation materials and then also an EOC upgrade with maintenance services. Uh, I think it's good that we have as much backup as we can when we're looking at these expenditures that are close to $100,000. So if can you help me out on this? I've yep. got okay. the police chief, fire chief and the IT people. So whichever one of you <laughs> think wants three. to go in on your center. Yeah. I'll begin if you want. Sure. Um, which specific questions you want answered? Um, the TVs? Yeah. I'm just going to go down the line. Uh, Hi, um, as you know, Hurricane Irma, we experienced some communication issues in that EOC. Um, we did a whole extensive study. Our IT director is here. Our fire chief is, there, is back there. Um, a lot of the stuff you see is a major upgrade for our EOC center to provide connectivity, to provide up-to-date technology so we're in sync with everybody else is very important. Um, the TVs, if you saw when the fire chief gave his presentation, you see how that whole EOC is set up. Every department head has a section on that table where they're disseminating information and communicating. The TVs, the seven of them, are actually lined up. They specced out that whole room around the table so we can see what is going on with big screens. So if the police department's got stuff going on, it's here. If purchasing has stuff going on, it's there. So it really enhances our ability to communicate with each other in EOC. There was a specific reason why that was specced out like that and why we need those TVs. Um, I know I, I work with Suzanne on it, and um, this vendor is on state contract. They specced out the whole thing. Um, life cycle on this stuff's five to 10 years. Um, so we, we believe that this is a very good investment for the EOC and those TVs also, as you know, that room is a multi-purpose room. So we do training in that room. The fire department use that room for all kinds of services for the public. We do citizens Academy there. So, and 
in all actuality, those TVs aren't just going to be sitting there collecting dust until we have an event. You know, we're definitely going to be utilizing that room and those TVs and the technology in there for other uses too. Yeah, thanks. I, I mean, it was clear I, I got enough backup through my emails, but I think it's important that we highlight this for our residents because it, you guys do a lot in the EOC as the police, the fire, and, te and our IT technology side. So um, thanks for bringing this back before the commission and listening to our request to make sure that we have the most updated EOC to protect our residents and respond uh, in the need of an emergency. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Do you have any other questions? No. Okay. Mayor, if I may. Go ahead. Mark, could you reiterate what was said in the email about how that's used year round and training and whatnot that that, that, that TV? Yes, it, yes, it is. That, like the chief pointed out, it is used for training. Um, it, Internal training. We hold other. We've we've held training there for outside groups. We've hosted. We're able to, as you said, when we when we got chosen as one of the best centers and stuff. We actually use that as a model um, for cities or other other places to come and show that um, as an example how to set the you'll see. So there are a lot of other uses for that. And the Assistance Academy sees it at least once a class, if not twice, depending on the location twice, for right. fires. Yeah. And with the popularity of Irene and you've done with that thing, there's two it's and three a close. year now. So just my idea was all the to it. <laughs> I just wanted to add something. Thank you. Uh, Mayor. Yes. I know that uh, through the emails we got, you also brought up the carts, but those are on wheels, so they can be used in other areas. So. It's mobile, correct. That's the Microsoft it was Surface Hub. It's, it's not what just it's called, for but that. it's actually mobile. Right, right. And that's, so. a, that's a, a key piece of, of our upgrade. But we can move that around. Thank you. Are there any public comments on the item number 11? You know, I need a motion for number 11. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kipta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzas? Yes. Thank you. We are now <laughs> going to the item number 12, which is the ordinance 2018-12 Land Development Code Amendment. The section 41.03 stormwater. This is a second reading. The city attorney will read the ordinance and then we're going to have a staff report. Thank you. Ordinance number 2018-12 and ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the comprehensive zoning and land development code of the City of Tarpon Springs as follows. Appendix A, Article 9, Section 141.03 stormwater retrofit allowing exemption for development additional gross floor area over existing and pervious services, providing for modifications that may arise at public hearing, providing for repeal of ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, and providing for, and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. Uh, this is a second reading of Ordinance Number 2018-12, published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 4th, 2018, and June 1st, 2018. And Stephanie. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, Heather Earle, your Planning and Zoning Director. Um, there's been no additional um, information since first read, and since we had a full presentation during that, I'll answer any questions that you may have, but there has not been any additional information. Are there any Commission comments or questions? You know, are there any public comments on this item? Hear none. I need a motion. Well, motion to approve. Second. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzas? Yes, thank you. Item number 13 is the ordinance 2018-07, Comprehensive Plan, Future Land Use, Coastal Element. This is a second reading. The city attorney will read the ordinance. Ordinance number 2018-07, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the future land use element of the comprehensive plan by revising Section 3, existing land use data requirements, adding subparagraph 6, relocating subparagraph H from Section 6, revising the goals, objectives, and policies by clarifying policies 1.1.2 and 1.1.10, adding a new goal to providing a rationale for the adding, <clears throat> excuse me, providing a rationale for the future land use map and moving the future land use categories from section six to goal two, revising goal three to incorporate density and intensity standards in the coastal high hazard area to be consistent with the countywide rules, renumbering all subsequent goals, objectives, and policies, 
striking redundant sections, and renumbering the subsections, subsequent sections to remove or correct outdated references, amending the coastal planning and conservation element by revising policy 1.6.6 .6 to modify the reference to the future land use element for preservation for preservation and conservation of environmentally sensitive areas and deleting policy 1.6.7, providing for correction of scrivener's errors, providing for other modifications that may arise from a view of this ordinance, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. This has been a first reading ordinance number 2018-07, published in the Tampa Bay Times on March 2nd and June 1st, 2018. Thank you. Staff report. Yeah, again, Mayor, Commissioners, Heather Roller, um, your planning and zoning director and staff to this application. Uh, this is an amendment that's essentially modifying both your future land use element and your um, coastal and conservation element. Um, essentially, it's been, this is the second reading. Uh, af after first reading, it was sent to the state for approval. Um, the state has sent back their approval. It was also sent to the county and the other state agencies. All the state agencies have responded with their approval, and the county and Ford Pinellas has responded that it is consistent with the countywide rules. All of the letters for that correspondence that's been received are in the backup to your to your staff report for this. In the last 24 hours, staff has received um, and been made aware of a. There's some concerns in the community. With that, staff has provided a written response to you in response to um, the request from the city manager, and you have that uh, information as well. Um, with that, staff's gonna make the following um, recommendations and changes um, at moving forward based on the comments that have been received. So if you'll bear with me for a minute, I'm gonna go through the uh, backup to the exhibit, to the ordinance, and discuss those changes that we're proposing at this time. So on page one, section three, existing, uh, existing land use data requirements, section B, future land use element is amended and to add the, and relocate subparagraph H of section uh, six, year 20, uh, 2025 future land use amendment and to revise the text as following. Staff is suggesting that the initial paragraph under section six be struck, that's being act actually being proposed to be added, and that the language that is shown in um, cross out be um, no longer deleted and so it would remain in the comp plan. That addresses some of the concerns that community has um, with uh, the proposed uh, language amendments. On page two, under section five, future land use goals, um, objectives, policies, and the future land use elements are amended um, to add goal two, objective 2.1, policies 2.1.1, 2.1.2, and 2.1.3 as follows. The intention of this section was to bring your land use um, categories actually in line with your policy language because at this point in time it's not there it's a separate entity that just resides at the rear portion of your your comp plan so to make it an integrated part of your comp plan and your policy language that's what the intention of this goal was the goal and objective don't seem to be in um, dispute however the policy language at this time seems to have some some residents concerned so as a result the the staff is willing to um, at this point pull that language so that would be policy 2.1.1, 2.1.2, and 2.1.3. We'll come back with additional language in the future to address that concern. Essentially, the goal still accomplishes what the staff is trying to do, which is in, integrate in those um, land uses into the comp plan. So the goal and objective will do that. The policy language can be implemented later. Now, on page six, is the next change that the staff is proposing. And essentially that is under section seven, conservation goals, objective policies of the coastal area and conservation island is amended to revise policy 6.1. .6 and to remove policy 6.1.7 as follows. Uh, staff is recommending that the policy language change that is proposed in policy 1.6.6 .6 is, is 
is remains. However, the deletion of policy 1.6.7 would no longer be deleted. It would remain in the comp plan in that element. Um, that would address an additional concern. The balance of the other changes are language that needs to be changed either for consistency or to clean up um, the element since we're going through this process to clean up your policy language at this time. That's, that's what we're asking to do. So staff is recommending approval with the modifications as outlined. And I can answer any questions that you have. You might want to explain the process to what this sure. does. Um, with that, what's going, to event, what's going to have to happen is, depending upon the outcome of this meeting and, and your opinions on the recommendations that staff's now providing to you kind of at the last minute, we would have to go through and modify this ordinance. So as a result of any um, discussion that's had tonight in any direction, I'd ask for clear, as clear direction as possible because my ad needs to go in the paper tomorrow morning in order for me to get on to your next commission meeting so that this can re be resolved. I'm on a deadline for the consistency portion of this to be consistent with the countywide rules, and I have projects coming behind this that need that consistency to happen. So while I don't mind removing the language that is in contention right now because it's not a part of the necessary component for me to meet the, the requirements that I need to meet for August, I am needing to still move forward on this, on the, the basic language here, especially with the coastal high hazard language and getting that implemented by my August deadline. So my recommendation at this point stands that we do that. I can get it, I can make the advertising deadline tomorrow morning. The ad will be in the paper on Saturday and we will hear this in on this eight or second meeting in June. So again, for a second reading. And come back to you for a second reading with those changes at the next meeting and you could uh, address the issues with that. We just need to know before we advertise there's any other. So that's what we're requesting to do. Um, if that's the will of the board to make those changes and again, advertise it, bring it back to the meeting uh, with those changes. And again, I can't, sorry, again I explain to us why we cannot do it right the first time. Why we have to wait and do it twice. What do you mean why we can't do it right the first time? Well, this is in I mean, response. Why can't we have it as a complete unit? Why we have to do it twice? Because there's Why can okay. we do the modifications and one? The reason why you can't do the modifications tonight is they're substantive. The way the ordinance is written, and your attorney can speak to this as well, the way that the um, language is written is the and, and, and the <coughs> header is written there and it was advertised is those sections are being deleted. It's a substantive change for us to now come back and say we no longer want to delete those sections of our code if that's, the, if that's what the, the majority of the board here wants to do tonight. It's a substantive enough change that we need to go back and advertise and wait the, uh, the required 10 days for that advertisement to come back to you for, for hearing. That's the, the minimum that we have to wait to notice the public that there, that there has been a substantive change in the ordinance and go through that, uh, that additional second reading. Okay, thank you. Is there any commission comments, question? Vice Mayor. Yes, thank you, Heather, for making these changes. I'll, I'll, though uh, last minute, I know we passed this on first reading. I don't. I never <coughs> profess to be a, an environmentalist, so I depend upon many of those in the community that have this expertise to to uh, alert us when we need to have some changes. So I thank you for being responsive to those as well. And correct and uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but also in changing the part where things still come to us for review here on. Here here on the BOC? Correct. That policy language that was the problem was that policy language that was alluding to those three policies. We will be adjusting that policy language. I think there's some misunderstanding there. There is no possible way for me as, a, as, a, as an administrator for your zoning and your comprehensive planning program to amend those without going to the state for review. The state requires those amendments. Now, I can consolidate those changes um, to a one-time amendment that happens once a year, which is what the county does the county does that once a year and both the county planning program and your countywide rules they they adjust those pro, those areas that they add into preservation as a result of all of the require requests that each one of the communities comes they do it for a reason to it makes it easier for them from our perspective <coughs> it would make it easier for us to do it that way because it would require us to look at our maps and touch our maps once a year and that is something that needs to be happening on a more regular basis. So from my perspective, from an administration perspective, it's a better tool to consolidate those changes into a one-time amendment. However, 
right now the way this language reads is those additional amendments would happen at the time of uh, applications. When an applicant comes in, just like you see on a regular basis, the applicant changes the, makes the change that they need to make to the land use, and then they have the, the site plan and all the other components fall in line with that, and we synchronize those applications right now. Thank you. Well, I, I, I do appreciate us preserving at least then the the uh, the uh, BOC's authority because as I said we are the ones responsible on this board not 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 staff when it comes to being responsible to the community and uh, I thank you for at least I guess I guess I guess cleaning that uh, language up so thank you very much thank you so much for um, being uh, working on this so quickly for us I know this was last minute today and. Um, but it is an important issue, um, and I want to thank you for listening to our community and um, and working with everybody. I think this is a better option. What you're proposing is a better option for us, and I do like the idea that, um, as Vice Mayor said, um, that we make some of these decisions. It's our responsibility as an elected official to make some of these major decisions for our city, um, especially when it comes to environmental issues. Um, years ago, there was... A code that we changed. Um, I believe it was with the planning and zoning directorate. Remember that, Mark? That gave that we took his authority away, and we gave we the board of commissioners, the board of commissioners um, took over that authority. You remember that? Yeah, I don't remember the the particular. It was detail, after the Walmart the, issue, yeah. or before. I'm not sure. Or that. during. Yeah. So I, I, it was. It's very important that we uh, that we keep keep that you know that we are the decision makers when it comes to the environment like that so again I appreciate um, you last minute working on this for us and again you know we appreciate everything you do for us well again this is going to be a, a stop get measure we will be coming back to to uh, address this section because there are some from my opinion technical problems with the way that this language is implemented in your comprehensive plan there's language that belongs in your land development code and that just that implementation never occurred so there there is some work to be done here but in the short term it's not absolutely necessary that it happened today or in the short term thank you yes uh, thank you Heather uh, I understand that your intention uh, with this ordinance is to um, achieve consistency and as you just said I think some of this language belongs in our, our land development code um, thank you for meeting with me today because we went over all of this and um, those three areas are areas that um, I know some some of our uh, public had opposition with um, and we looked at uh, changing that language and I, I, I do believe that um, the first one where you're striking um, this language should be kept in on the one that you mentioned on page um, one, um, and I'm not going to go repeat all of that, section six, and then um, page two, um, 2.13 uh, and 2.11 um, should be struck. Um, and again, on page six, um, 1.67 should, uh, should not be struck. So um, I think we should go ahead and, and modify this ordinance and, and uh, so that you do meet your deadlines um, that you have and come back and look at all this. And, and I know as a planning and zoning director, you can't make changes to the land use um, and that we have the, the final say on this in the state and the county and everybody else involved. So uh, thank you for your work today and, and getting this change for us. Your recommendations anyway. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, can you just clarify for me so I have a better understanding? Mm -hmm. You've mentioned it a few times that you have a certain deadline to have items cleaned up inside sure. a comp plan, right? So what that's alluding to is um, back in 16, the countywide rules were amended. As such, they gave us a window of time as a county to, or as a city to go through actually all the municipalities in the city to be consistent with the provisions that they changed. And so we did a portion of those provisional changes when we did your ear-based amendments, but the coastal high hazard area was an area that we were not prepared to deal with until after we got through the ear-based amendments. So that came later and that's the basis for this. The additional strike through and underlines that you see are just cleaning up agency names and changing outdated references to policies and statutes that no longer exist. 
When is the deadline? I believe it is August um, 10th. Of this year? Of this year, yes, correct. Is there more to do still? No. no. Okay. This is the last, this is that last, the last piece. Uh, just out of curiosity, you said there's some projects pending for this to be completed. Correct. We have some annexations and land use changes that if we're, if we're not consistent with the countywide land use, we can't move forward with making those amendments and changes. Because when we send them to the county, the county to Ford Pinellas for approval, they're going to kick them back to us and say that you need to finish your consistency requirements. Okay. So annexations and Annexations, land use. future land use amendments, any of those types of applications. And there are a few that are working their way slowly through the system. Heather, thank you for addressing the uh, concerns of the uh, public and making these modifications. We now go into the public comments. Yes, ma'am. I just have a question. Thank sure. <clears throat> um, I could probably ask it from here. No, no, no. You have to come to the podium, please. <laughs> and state your name your address for the record, please. Thank you. Patricia Borowick. And I'm at 2604 Oak Circle in Tarpon Springs. Um, most of what Heather t dealt with right now is those were things I had concerns about. So I'm delighted that, okay. that it, it's going back to the drawing board. Um, my question is, when will the revisions, the revised whole packets uh, that she created before, when will those be available on the city's website so that the public again sees them and can respond. That would be tomorrow, right? Okay. Tomorrow? Right. No. <laughs> I thought that was kind of quick. Go. <laughs> it would be it would be consistent with when your when your packets are available. We certainly can provide them very quickly after tomorrow when I get the the, the changes changed. The but as far as on the the packet availability, that would be usually when your packet is available. But we can provide those in the in the planning and zoning department. No one needs near wait needs to wait in the planning and zoning stuff. We put our packets together much in head of what you're thinking about. Are. What you're going to advertise, which is the changes. Sure, so the, uh, the be changes available. will be included, and so will the language be updated tomorrow. But that will be available tomorrow. And we can make it available tomorrow to anyone who wants, whether it makes it to the website or they just call us individually. We'll get it on the website as soon as we can thereafter. Yeah, because we have to advertise it, so it'll be read that portion of it, not the backup, but that'll be ready tomorrow, and we'll post it or get it to anybody who can leave their card up there and their email address, and we'll send it in new language to them tomorrow. And again, we've got a public hearing. When it comes up, there'll be a public hearing also, um, if there's anything to that. And then if you make some minor changes, the reason we have to do this because they're major. So if there's other little tweaks or something that doesn't do that, you can still do it at the public meeting the next time. Do we have any other comments? Yes, then. I'm Andy Samarcos, 1110 South Florida Avenue. For the record, and I don't know if anybody can answer this, but I, I, I know it's televised, recorded. I wish somebody would. What are the, specifically, what are the August projects that have deadlines? If this ordinance wording hasn't been amended all these years, what's the hurry now for a newspaper advertisement tomorrow? To me, I think to a lot of us, we know it's a red flag. I'm shaking. I, this, you know, I love this town. So I feel like, Somebody's trying to fool us here. This has something to do with the Wawa. We all know about that, but that'll be coming out more and more. So no Wawa on the wetlands, okay? We have people working on that project. No Wawa on alternate 19. Maybe it belongs on Highway 19. I feel like we don't need to further destroy. We talk about the gateway signs into our community. Why would we further destroy one of them in our historic town by putting a Wawa there? on a wetland. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments on this item? Here not. Oh. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Dory Larson. I live at 1846 Lexington Place in Tarpon. And um, I guess my concerns are just the comp plan is a statement of our city's vision. And most of the changes that I saw that I was concerned about were where we were cutting wetlands protection out of the comp plan and hearing that there are going to be further adjustments, which I'm glad to hear. Um, 
I just want to make sure that we're being transparent and that people can see all of the changes and all of the language further in advance because these are significant changes in my opinion that are worth taking the time. I'm not sure what the implication would be if we miss the deadline of August. I don't see why we would rush, rush, rush unless we're sure that these are the changes that we would like to see in our comp plan, which is, you know, an important guiding document to our community. Um, and I just also am a little unsure about what, if we're talking about making language consistent, why major, the, the major significant portion of the changes were specifically to wetlands. That is my concern. Um, and like I said, I'm, I would like to see the changes available so that we can all read them and understand them well in advance of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Yeah, none. And as I said, the language will be available tomorrow, and then there'll be two weeks where we're not dealing on less than 24 hours. There'll be two weeks to come in, talk, meet. Um, it'll be ready because we have to advertise tomorrow. So we've got two weeks to come in, get your questions, look at what the new language is, and uh, we'll go for there in two weeks. Tomorrow. Yeah. Well, i also like to thank the, uh, the public for uh, their input and allow us to make these uh, modifications. Thank you. So legally on setting the date and deferring it to next, or what's the? There's no, ne it's not necessary to, I mean, I'm stating that we're going to do it for the next meeting, but if the, it's not, we're not preserving an ad or anything. If there's no, there's no really reason to do that other than we're doing that for us to make consistently this discussion addressed and, and move forward. Um, but, but we'll be doing the advertising. And as I said, tomorrow, okay. it'll be available immediately. And once again, the language that we're talking about is currently in your comprehensive plan. All that we're saying is we're going to no longer delete it. So. I'd like to ask the uh, city attorney what we should do to um, have a motion and defer it. And your, your suggestion is to defer it? Yes, you, yeah. you can defer it to, it sounds like from, dis to, from the discussion to the next, to the next meeting. meeting. The next meeting. So I need a motion to defer to the next meeting. Motion to defer. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzas? Yes, thank you. Next is item number 14 is the ordinance 2018-13, the application 18-37. Slater annexation 1253 uh, North Pinellas Avenue. This is the first reading. Ordinance. The attorney, please read the ordinance. Ordinance number 2018-13, an ordinance of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, annexing lots 6, 7, 16, and 17, block 11. Fairview Subdivision, as recorded in Platte Book 9, page 18 of the public records of Pinellas County, Florida, less public rights of way, and consisting of 0.52 acres, more or less, of real property located on North Pinellas Avenue in Section 1, Township 27, South, Range 15, East, providing for findings and providing for an effective date. This has been a first reading of Ordinance Number 2013. Second reading will be held on August 7, 2018. This ordinance was published in the Tempe Times on May 4, 2018. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners, like once again, Heather Oler, Planning and Zoning Director, staff to hear this application. Just to give you an update on the hearing dates that are shown on your application, the second read has been moved from your 20 year meeting of June 26th to um, your August 7th meeting, and that's being done because there is a necessary requirement for us to also adjust a zone to have a zoning ordinance. It didn't make it into this annexation, so as a result, we're going to have to go back and get that to catch up. 
um, so that when we uh, go to second reading on August 7th, we'll have all of the pieces together at that reading. So with that, this annexation is for um, essentially half acre of property um, adjacent to a, uh, a property that is already zoned um, ROG and with a um, zoning rezone and being rezoned to RO residential office. Uh, essentially, Mr. Slater actually owns your, the adjacent piece of property. He purchased this property and he'd actually like this one to come in as well so that he can have both of these properties um, within the city limits. Um, essentially, at this particular point in time, the property is, is contiguous to the city limits, so it meets um, the tests for the annexation. It meets the minimum standards for the district. The property is developed with a single family residence. The applicant owns the adjacent property to the north, and is already, which is already located in the city limits, and he is requesting um, this voluntary annexation. Essentially, the, the property, again, is contiguous. It's within our wastewater facilities um, service area. Um, we can provide uh, potable water to the site and fire protection to the site. Um, it is consistent with um, the criteria of the comprehensive plan, and it is consistent um, with the future or the uses in the both the future land use and um, the zoning district are consistent between the countywide land use and the city's land use with a few caveats. The zoning district, the reason why you're going, we're gonna be moving forward with a zoning ordinance is our RO uses are slightly different. Our RO category is actually a more transitional zoning district where it allows for a real mix between office and residential uses. The current county zoning on this piece of property only allows a residential as an accessory to some other use. So it's consistent with the, the design of the building that's existing on the property. It's consistent with the adjacent land use. Um, so the staff is not concerned. The density and intensity standards between the county and the city's land use are the same. It's really just the use allowed uses are, are slightly different. Um, with that, the technical review team um, evaluated the project on April, eight, uh, April 12th of 2018. They, were, uh, they had no comments or concerns with this moving forward. It was a complete application at that time. We have done the required notifications and the staff is recommending approval of the requested for annexation and rezoning from P1 Pinellas County Zoning District to the RO City of Tarpon Springs Zoning District. The land use will remain the same. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Board heard this application on May 21st, 2018 and voted unanimously to recommend approval. At that meeting, we actually did have a resident um, that's adjacent to this property come in and speak in support. I don't know that he's here tonight, but to speak in support of Mr. Slater moving forward with bringing this, this particular property into um, the city. With that, I can answer any questions that you may have. Any commission comment, question? I've got a question, Heather. Um, I know there's a lot of properties in this area of Tarpon Springs that are unincorporated and <coughs> incorporated kind of creates a U around a lot of these properties is there a mechanism in place to where we can incorporate an area or does each property owner have to come in and request um, annexation and pay the five hundred dollar advertisement fee so it, it, it's it's both it's one and the same really a group of property owners can come in and request to be annexed in at the same time obviously that would be ideal because then we can address it as a unit coming in um, but an individual property owner can do can do that same thing so it really it's ideal when you can have that situation where a group of property owners want to come in um, but it's not necessarily mandatory the way that the state statutes written what if, like, from the city standpoint, the city is like, well, why don't we go ahead and annex in these properties? The city, that... there are two different types of annexation. There's voluntary annexation and involuntary annexation. If the city chooses to do, um, to annex in a group of par parcels, that go falls under a different set of um, requirements at the state for an involuntary annexation. But there's, it's not that the city can't do that. It's just a different, pro it's a slightly different process. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? No questions. Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. We need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. In roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Major Young is next. 
item number 15 the ordinance 2018-14 amend the special slow speed minimal wake zone and special idle speed no wake zones on anklo river this is the first reading actually this is just a section what was that sir this is just a section city attorney would you please read the ordinance ordinance number 2018-14 an ordinance of the city of tarpon springs florida Amending Chapter 5, Boats, Docks, and Waterways, Article 1 in general by adding a new section entitled Sections 5-7.1, Establishment of Special Slow Speed Minimal Wake Zones and Special Idle Speed No Wake Zones on the Anklote River, providing for appeal of ordinances or parts of ordinances and conflict herewith, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, and providing for the effective date of this ordinance. It's been a first reading of Ordinance 2018-14. The second reading will be held on June 26, 2018. This was published in the Tampa Bay Times on May 25th and June 1st, 2018. Major Young. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, again, we're just bringing this one back as an amendment to one we brought in 2017-32 with the board. Uh, Patrick and I have been working with the state on this. Uh, most of this is just language changes. It's just context changes within the uh, ordinance. We're not changing the content of the ordinance. Still looking at those same areas that were addressed in the commission meeting uh, back in uh, late 17. Uh, we did go through the review process, ordinance review process with the state. Uh, went through their 21-day review online. No appeals to that. Uh, we're just bringing this forward now. Uh, as a final product uh, to be uh, voted on by the commission, then we would send it, once the second reading's completed and you adopt this new ordinance, we would send this through the permitting process. Thank you for your hard work to make this happen. Well, I thank uh, having Patrick help me. Comments or questions? Any, any uh, commission comments? Are there any public comments on this item? Dory Larson, 1846 Lexington Place. Um, I just, I, I guess a question, more about the enforcement of it, just to make sure that we are enforcing, if we are going to put this ordinance and expand it, because people just rip through um, near the Yacht Club already where it's a no-wake zone, um, just making sure that we're keeping up with the enforcement of it as well. It's up to the Fish and Wildlife. Uh, we work on enforcement efforts on a daily basis with FWC, Sheriff's Office, and other jurisdictions uh, through this area. Uh, we recently did uh, receive some uh, vessels of our own that we can look in the lower lying areas and so forth for enforcement and helping, uh, you know, in, in those areas. But most of it's going to be done through FWC on the main parts of the channel, and they're running outside the channel, and we get those complaints uh, periodically. And uh, Major Young with the Sheriff's Office. Or, or correction with FWC is uh, working on that process with us on a daily basis, along with Captain Navarro uh, with FWC and other agencies. Again, thank you. Any other public comment? You are none. I need a motion. Motion approved. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahusis? Yes. Next is resolution 2018-11, budget resolution, and the Sierra attorney will read the resolution. <clears throat> resolution 2018-11, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the budget for fiscal year 2017-2018, uh, be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that the following amendments are made to the fiscal year budget of 2017-2018. It's been a reading of the resolution 2018-11. Staff report, Mr. Herring. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Ron Herring, Finance Director. The purpose of Budget Resolution 2018-11 is to budget for items that have come up during the year that have previously, you know, have not been budgeted for. And I've tried to summarize them in the front cover letter. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to go over them. Okay. Any questions? Pretty clear. Mr. Corey, have a question? No, it was pretty clear. Okay. Yeah. Are there any public comments on this item? I hear none. Thank you. Sure. It was self explanatory. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahusis? Yes, thank you. Now we're going to the item number 17. This is, for this, this is a discussion item. 
extension of Belcher and pedestrian bicycle trail to the beaches. Uh, it was requested by Commissioner Carr. <coughs> this is actually two different items to discuss. Start with you, Commissioner Carr. Thank you, Mayor. Is there one that you would like to discuss first versus uh, another? Well, you go oh, ahead. Okay, uh, the first one I, I would like to talk about is the pedestrian bike trail from, uh, it's more of like a pathway, bike trail, boardwalk, something that we could continue off Craig Park. Uh, we brought it up in the past about addressing the boulders that are along South Spring Boulevard uh, from Craig Park at the boat ramp uh, to Martin Luther King Bridge. And then they also go around parts of Whitcomb Bayou. Uh, that was done to solidify the shoreline, but never showed up to the commission to actually approve or anything along those lines. Uh, it's created a dangerous situation. But I think we have an opportunity here to continue what we have in Craig Park, which is beautiful, where we have a lot of people that come from the neighborhoods and a lot of people that drive in from other parts of Tarpon Springs in the community, um, the surrounding <coughs> communities, to walk the bayous and actually enjoy some of the shoreline that's publicly public space. Um, to be able to connect Craig Park to the beaches is something that I think would be ideal. Uh, currently today, there's breaks in the sidewalks uh, between the two, and if we're able to add wider sidewalks, a pathway of some sort, it's gonna create a safer environment. Um, it's gonna aesthetically, I think, look better. And then also it will encourage more visitors to visit Tarpon Springs and also encourage uh, additional residents to get out and a safer um, ability to walk, run, or bike along these areas. Uh, I would like to ask the city manager to continue to look at some options for this, and I wanted to bring it up to the rest of the board. Um, I do know that with the pool, that was a recreation mechanism that was recently canceled by the board, and that there would be some funds somewhere in that area in the coming budgets uh, to potentially have a starting point of looking at a design uh, keeping it within the recreation mindset uh, for the residents. Um, and then the, other, the next part is saying, would you put it on the bayou side or would you put it on um, the across the road side? And I, I think it would be interesting to have a conversation about that because you could have something that protects the shoreline, especially in the county portion of the road, that's similar to Spring Bayou where you have a seawall and you know you're not going to lose that seawall to um, future erosion that we've seen around the bayous for many, many years. Again, I, I believe there's a safety concern, especially along South Spring Boulevard, and then also out to the beaches. Uh, so I wanted to bring this up to the commission. I, I think it's a good idea. I know a lot of people have expressed information or expressed interest in the community about it, and I think it's good for us to at least talk about it and put it on some type of planning portion. Uh, yes, I, I know we've talked about this for a while, and, and this has been brought up to Bob Robertson, who has looked at options. We've looked at um, making that one section of South Spring one way um, so that we can have room for uh, public um, bi for biking and for walking. Um, but I, I know that Bob is still working on this. Uh, and as far as, you know, I live on that street, so <laughs> I, I see it every day. As far as the sidewalks, there's a large portion where there are no sidewalks uh, that we would have to add, but uh, residents own those properties. So, you know, I guess we would have to investigate whether those residents would be willing to uh, give us the rights to, to those, uh, to their properties and remove trees and, and those kinds of things to put the, uh, the sidewalk on, on their properties on the other side. Um, we've talked about putting something over uh, the rocks, but then there, there was a mention of needing a railing, which I think most residents on, on South Spring would, would disapprove of. So, um, yeah, it's something I would love to see, too. Uh, I thought the, the one-way uh, uh, idea from MLK to um, all the way to Banana uh, would have given us the room to do something for pedestrian and, and bicycle traffic and, and make it safer because... With two cars, a boat trailer, and people running and, and biking on South Spring, it's a dangerous situation. And especially if we have an event and, and cars are parked all the way down South Spring, like for the fun art event. So, um, again, I, I think we need to talk about this with, with Bob and see his study and, and what the results are from that study that he was doing, which we haven't heard. I'd, I'd like to hear 
something back from that uh, from that study as far as the one way and and, yeah. and our options uh, that we were yeah. talking about to, to look at. Well, before I let me tell you where we left. We left off with the one way thing is I <laughs> I predicted because I went through this before that the residents were not going to like it. So um, and I knew because many many years ago they went ballistic over the plan and I knew they were going to go again. So so. To me, and, and we'll get the other part later, that is one of the few viable options to get everything you want with bike and pedestrian. It's not a good, I'm not saying it's a good option, but it's the viable. So after that, and we kind of saw that wasn't going to go, he's been working to solidify all the other options, and there's a bunch of them. Um, and he should be ready. He's back from vacation next week. So I, so I would say after Monday, each of you should make an appointment with Bob Robertson, because it's rather lengthy, all the options. Make an appointment with him and go over all those options where they are. I can tell you I'm not sure any of them are workable. I can tell you a lot of them were done with the possibility of getting permitted, but even though our engineer who did some of these designs and thought it could meet it, I don't think when it goes to the approval process of the Army Corps, I don't think they're going to approve them. I may be wrong, but again, there's many, many options. When he comes, he's got them all after that. Um, we can always go to the other side and finish those sidewalks, but I just ask you to go ride and see those homes. We have to figure out if we have right away there and we're going to make some disruptions in people's yards, but we may have to do that and stuff. But that's one of the options he'll tell you about, but there's probably eight, seven, eight, nine options. But I think everybody should meet with them individually to get all those things. And then it comes either to a work session or to something else and, and we discuss them. But, you know, after he gets back from his, vacation next week i encourage everybody to go and see where we are with that and then we'll have you know once you are updated then we need to sit and talk about it in a in a public forum and see where we're going to go on it do you know if bob's made contact with the army corps as far as the other side and and doing something with with that side oh yeah we okay, oh right. our, yeah, and our engineer right. so we got we from, our, from that. our consultant engineers working closely something's with been them. brought up but remember the army corps will tell you Yes, we'll be viable and we will look at it. And yes, we will look at it. You've seen memos before saying they'll do this. And they said, the Army Corps will only tell you they will look at it. Um, they'll tell you when they absolutely won't. But just because they tell you they're going to look at it, when it comes in for permitting, um, there's no guarantee. And I can tell you some of those plans that they said, go ahead and put it together and bring to me. I can absolutely, if I was a betting man, bet the money that they're going to disapprove them. But he'll tell you that because he kind of can gauge him and stuff. And, again, it's long and complicated. So I think each of you should be filled in individually. And then we need to collectively get together and see where we're going. As far as the trail to the beach, I can tell you, and, and I had Tom Function check because he's been working with the county with our own former Rodney Chapman, who, who does different bike ways. There's always been and still was four ways you can do the bike trail and go out to the beaches. The ones are limited. That's the Yacht Club Bridge that way. They've already eliminated that. That's not a viable option. I can tell you they haven't eliminated it yet, but again, and I've been involved with this thing for six or seven years about this trailer stuff, I don't see any way they can do it around Wickham because not only do you have these shoreline problems on the other side, the count, there's a tremendous utilities. All the utilities are on the opposite side of the road. So while they wouldn't tell us when Tom updated, have you eliminated that? They said, no, we haven't eliminated yet, but there's serious challenges. Um, the only other two, and the one I think is most viable, it's not going to be one maybe everybody likes, but I think the most viable one is mirrors. Um, that's not the best, but I think that may be the most viable. Obviously, the other one's Klosterman. Those were the four long time ago it was been a plan to identify from the trail to get out to the beaches. The county is still looking at all those options, um, but I can tell you my prediction, and I believe that Wickham's going to be eliminated um, because you just can't adjust. They've got a tremendous amount of money they've got to spend and do to do their shoreline, which you know we only go beyond that point and that's theirs. That shoreline's that shoreline's in deep trouble. There's no way they're going to put it on that side, and because of all the county utilities and utilities on the other side, I don't think. But again, they still are looking at those three options. Um, and they have said they'll work with the city and our preferences and stuff. But unfortunately, when it gets down to more work and a bunch of stuff, I think, you know, Mears is going to be the most viable option. But again, it's early and they're still looking. And they know our number cho one choice would be obviously going the straight route, Wickham Gulf and out to the beach, the center of town. 
you know, most, but um, I'm just not sure that's going to be viable. But, they, but we confirmed that they're still working. They're still looking at that as part of their trails, but we don't have anything of now, but they're still working on it. And that's the update I got of, as of today with them and, and that plan. And obviously whatever we do needs to coincide with what they decide to do because the major portion of the work is county work. So, Vice Mayor Pratt. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carr, for bringing this up. Um, I don't do cardio, obviously, but uh, I think it's important to, <laughs> to, to provide safe venues for those that, 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 that wish, and a lot of people here do. Um, I'm, for, I'm for anything that's feasible being the key word to get the bikers off the road because when I'm driving and I can't, you can't pass on the bayou, at least legally, and it's, you know, it's, cha it's, it's a safety challenge for them and it slows traffic down. So, um, you know, I, don't, I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't really know. We'll have to see what comes back to us about Spring Bayou and Withcombe Bayou. Um, you know, I know when the one way was proposed, the residents got pretty upset. Um, I, I don't live there, so it's, it's, you know, it's their opinion. Um, but uh, I do, right off the top of my head, but before Mark mentioned it, I thought about um, mirrors as far as coming off the trail. Um, so that might be an option as well, but I'm for whatever gets the bikers off the road because it's, it, it's, it, it's an accident waiting to happen. Now, they can still choose to ride on the road, but I would assume if they had a safe option not to, that they would not ride on the road unless they're training for a triathlon. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think we should investigate what's feasible and uh, put that into some kind of a plan because a lot of people do, do bike and walk and, and whatnot, and uh, they need a safe place to do it, and our roads certainly are not the safe place to do it. So thank you. Uh, yeah, could I just make a comment? Yeah, I agree with you with the bikers, but there's so many pedestrians and runners on that road, and, and I see children and runners and pedestrians in that section of South Spring where there's no sidewalk, and that is very dangerous. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I have to agree with um, some of my commissioners here, Vice Mayor. Um, South Spring and Whitcomb Bayou are very dangerous. I don't honestly see how we could share the road with bikers or, or walkers on those two roads. I think my opinion is mirrors when, when that, because I know there were some plans for mirrors and I, you know, it's been a slow time coming, but I think um, the trail ends right there at mirrors and take, taking, mirror, uh, taking mirrors down to um, Florida to, to, the, to the beaches is going to be the best option. There's room there uh, to add um, sidewalks wherever they need to be added, or the bike lane, and you know a shareable road. I think that's going to be the best option. I know that the survey that was put out was uh, not a big hit in town, um, <laughs> and um, that I think that could have been a great option, maybe you know around South Spring, sharing the roadway and making, but it, it just didn't fly here in, in our community. So. We need to find another option, and Mr. Robertson, I know, is working on it, and I think, good idea, Mark. I think we should all meet with him, or and then maybe have a work session after that um, at the end of the summer, and and come up with some other options. Um, but thank you for bringing this up, Commissioner Carr. I want to thank you for bringing this forward. This is a very important issue to uh, many people in the area, and uh, we, uh, this is something that we really need to provide to the, to the residents and to our visitors. Mm. You have sidewalks, especially on, the, on the South Spring Boulevard, found very, very unsafe. I, I walk that area a lot, I drive that area a lot, and I know uh, Mission Sieber lives there, so you get to witness that all day long. Okay. Uh, we need to, um, let's wait and see what uh, Mr. Bob Robinson comes up with, and see what options he can give us. And, but we need to provide some kind of a uh, sidewalk there. But uh, in, in regards to the uh, bicycle trail, let's look at all the options that we have. But we also need to work with the, uh, the county because the shoreline needs to be restored right on the Wickham Boulevard. It's getting to a point now that many of the trees are about ready to fall in the water. So we need, we need to work with that. And um, I will be calling um, uh, the, city, you know, the county commissioner and talk to him again. I think we're scheduled to have lunch together in a week or two, so we're going to be talking about that. I've reached out to the county commissioners. Um, I do it every couple times a year just to refresh their memory that there's a need there. And I think it's good for all of our commissioners and the mayor to continue to express the needs and to remind them that we have sidewalks and issues that need to be addressed. 
uh, on the county roads throughout Tarpon Springs um, because there is areas that really do need to be addressed that the county has jurisdiction over. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. You also have another part, uh, the extension of Veltry, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, well. yeah. Thank you very much, Mayor, for uh, giving me the time to, to talk about this. Uh, I do want to bring up a, a few issues. Um, one of the things that I have continued getting complaints about from residents and when I walked was the traffic on Ultra 19. Um, when I was in high school, I wasn't allowed to drive on US 19. I had to drive Ultra 19 because of the how dangerous it is. My parents said, you're, you're allowed to drive, but you're not allowed to drive in US 19, which is fine. I understand. Um, but it, it just does prove a point that US 19 is a dangerous road. And we have a lot of residents that come back into Tarpon Springs, and our town has grown tremendously over the past few years from our development at Bayshore Heights, uh, the senior um, housing at ML, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and Safford, um, the apartments that are planning on going in at Mears and Ultra 19, the potential redevelopment of Winn-Dixie, the old Winn-Dixie property, um, to be something different, and then all the other houses that have been built in Tarpon as well. So. Um, with the continuing growing business environment we're seeing, I think it's a time to bring up and at least have some discussions about what options could look like. Um, I spoke with Witt, who's the director of Ford Pinellas, and he did say that he could come and help the city with a planning process or help out with designs uh, for the trail that I mentioned that we just spoke about and potentially extending Belcher north to Mears. Um, I just want to bring up a couple ideas uh, in this public forum, just to thinking about the residents that are currently on Distin today. Um, today, they've got a lot of traffic that cuts through their neighborhood that goes up across Ker um, Klosterman, through Distin, to Curlew Place, and then Ultra 19. And then we sit on Ultra 19, it's backed up to Klosterman daily. Sometimes it's backed up to the county reclaimed water plant south of Klosterman. And then Klosterman backs up pretty bad towards Oakleaf Village, especially during season. Um, again, daily, 19 is backed up to Klosterman a lot of days. And when you get in the season, it gets really bad. Um, I would like to just talk about this. Uh, one of the things, because I, I, I drive it often and I look at it and I, I think about how do we respect um, the residents that are trying to get to their homes further in the city, but then how do we be good neighbors and respect people that live on these houses as well? Uh, I would like to bring up an example. If you travel south in Dunedin, south of Curly Road, right across from the golf course, you could see that Ultra 19 runs uh, south, and then you have houses that sit right on Ultra 19. But there's a frontage road that's, I believe, one way. And so it gives the houses an opportunity to back out of their driveway on a safe, slow street. And the Ultra 19 still moves the traffic south, and these houses still sit on Ultra 19. There's a lot of right away in this area, so if we're going to talk about this and look at it for the future with potentially the apartments coming in and mirrors <coughs> connecting the 19, um, and having maybe this plan not too long after that, that it would still give the um, homeowners that might have kids an area to play in the street that's not actually in a busy road like Belcher, and then also when they back out of their houses, it gives them a safe area to back into. Um, I want to bring it up as a commission because I think it's an important part, one, for evacuation uh, that was brought up about hurricanes and other safety evacuation routes throughout the city. Uh, two, Belcher seems to be a safer road than 19. Three, Ultra 19 is just really, really bad traffic backed up right now. And then uh, the fourth one was emergency response times. I know in the Oakley Village areas and other parts of the south part of town that if a fire truck needed to come to rescue for an emergency or a police officer had to respond from um, the public safety building, it would have to go down 19 or down Ultra 19 through Tarpon Avenue, and you're looking at adding a few minutes. And, and in response time, we know a few minutes is critical, um, like we learned when we went through the fire ops course. Um, so I just want to bring this up as uh, as a board. I think it's an important part to address and get uh, just the mindset on looking at a design phase. And I'm, I'm not trying to get some uh, commissioners to say yay or nay tonight to to do the to do the project. It's more of a yay or nay. Let's look at a design mechanism to see what it could look like um, to pull this forward. Commissioner Fifth. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I've always <clears throat> been um, interested in, I guess if we say, we'd say extending distant, which belts, not Belcher, right? We don't, yeah, we, we had no control for Belcher. But distant, we do. Um, if my office is at distant and Tarpon Avenue. It'd be really nice to have that open. But that being said, I don't, I, I don't live along there. I'm sure, you know, they might have some opinions there. Uh, I, I did own a villa back there in the woods that has a security gate that backs up or distant dead ends. And and though I, and I, lived, I lived in the front of the community, but I still would want it to extend when I lived there. <laughs> so if it's feasible, um, who owns, do we own that land or is that habitat between us, between where distant ends and where, what's it, Mango? Or what, what's it, no, where, between, but, but between the two distance, that property. I think we only got a couple lot. But is it, but is it habitat that owns yeah. the rest? Yes, but that whole thing is in a... Oh, that's when it's in a legal battle? Yeah. Oh, damn. That might... Oh, never mind. That's, yeah, that, that could be problematic. It, it, it'll, it'll resolve one day, I guess, but uh, I, I, did, I, did, I, I did hear about that. But um, we have to get control of that property and extend it. I mean, I'm, I, I'm all for looking at it. It makes perfect sense. That being said, I want, I want, to, I want, I want, I want to be respectful for those that live along those areas. And, uh, you know... And I think we have one gentleman out there that emailed us a lot, Bob, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if we, if, we, if we could figure out a way to obtain the property, afford to extend distant, put in all the requirements that we'd have to have by extending distant, and then have a workshop with the surrounding communities, we could maybe, maybe pull it off. There's no reason to say not to. It's just I think there's a lot of hurdles to go through to, to get it done. But certainly it's an attractive idea, I guess, unless you're living right off distant there. Thank you. Um, speaking of living off distant, I did live in a house on distant Avenue. Mm -hmm. The traffic is horrendous on that road. It's very dangerous. Um, you're talking about a major road going through a development is the way I look at it. Only because I lived there and I do currently live in Oakley Village, but I live on the other side now. So I know years ago growing up, that's where we moved to is Oakley. Our house was built there. And there was a fight, a long battle that went on about opening that road through. Um, the community had quite a battle over it, and they did not want it. So personally, I think if it's something we even think to consider, I would definitely want a meeting with the Homeowners Association of Oakley Village and the Woods, because I, um, and I think it's important <laughs> to include them to see how they feel about it. Feelings may change over the years. I'm not sure. But like I said, I lived on that road two years ago, and, it's, um, and we do get emails from one of our residents. I know that uh, we have a, I don't know what you call it, the dummy police car thing out there. <laughs> I don't know what they call it. Um, <laughs> but that's out there quite a bit to try and slow traffic down. Yeah. Because it was just there, and they just moved around the corner to um, Easiest. Curlew Place. Curlew. So he's there now. So around. I'm sorry, I'm giving we up move him spots. Around. But um, <laughs> so they're there a lot. I've been, I've experienced um, some of our police officers out there with the gun, um, not gun, you know, gun. laser. Yeah, the taser <laughs> gun, or whatever, the, the laser gun. <laughs> you know, stopping people. I mean, they've had lines and lines of people. So uh, the speed is definitely. A problem on that road. Um, I know that there was traffic studies done. We pulled from those the signs that you know give your speed. Speed indicators. Yeah, yeah, there was there was some years ago. There was some uh, studies done on that, or you pulled the speeds off of that, or something. So, so obviously there's an issue on Distant Avenue. Um, I think may you know maybe once Mears is put through. Because Mears is supposed to be from 19 to the beach to um, okay. Florida Avenue, and that's supposed to be an evacuation route. That's what it's meant to be. So there's our evacuation, an additional evacuation route there. Um, I think if the fire or the police had or response time issues, they would, you know, and I've talked to them about response times, and they're very happy with their response times right now. Um, I'm not saying that they can never, you know, never be improved, but... Um, they're they're okay with their response times so again if we were to even consider this option i would <clears throat> request 
meetings with um, the homeowners associations of both developments there, um, as well as um, the surrounding communities. And again, possibly wait till Mears is put through till we spend any money on design and, and all that. <coughs> and just, just my thoughts. Like I said, I live there and uh, it's a, a dangerous road with speed right now. And I know it's been asked to put speed bumps and stuff, but it, that's not viable either. So your opinion, Mark? Well, again, I, I want to say that, and most of you, I knew you probably when you were a commissioner and you the last, I mean, again, and as I told Commissioner Carr, the policy has always been, and my direction has always been that we wait to get mirrors done and through, which I can't even give you, is it going to be the year? Is it going to be two years? Is it going to be five years? I still, until we know what's going on with the development, don't know. Um, one of the reasons is, one of the other reasons is you got to remember with our road money, with Spruce Street, a major project, and with that drainage on our, because remember, we have to do a portion of mirrors, the portion from distant to US 19, that cost is going to not. I can tell you now, all of our road money and everything is, is pretty much committed right now. But again, to even decide, you know, what that intersection is going to look at, the direction was always, let's get mirrors in and through. And then again, we do guarantee you, because I went through the last one, have to do a long public process. Because not only that, but the African-American community was not happy about that. It wasn't just Oak Leaf. It wasn't the African-American yeah, community. The Union Academy neighborhood needs to be involved So in there this. will have to be extension working with it. And of course, when mirrors get through and we realize, um, that, that was just the direction I've always got. And... Again, I wish I could give you a timetable on mirrors. Mirrors should have been done three, four, five years ago. Um, I hope they're working through the processes. So hopefully within the next six months, I'm going to know where they are um, and maybe give you some idea on how we plan and where we need to put in the budget for the different things to do. But again, it does have to have an extensive public process to go through before we, we do anything. It's just when do you, when do you start that process? Um, cause that's going to be long and rather in detailed in depth too. So it's just a timing when you start that process. Thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, understand what you're saying. Uh, commissioner, um, I take Curlew place to distance myself all the time, especially in the mornings, um, taking Maggie to school. But I know that that neighborhood has had problems with speeding, uh, on distant and we get the emails and the complaints. Uh, so making that a, a major thoroughfare, we would definitely have to meet with, with those residents and, and work that out. You talked about some type of frontage roads. I wasn't quite sure what you meant by that. Did you mean like off of Diston? Yeah, so it would be like you have Diston that would be a north and southbound lane, but then you actually have a one-way road that goes in front of the houses that would allow the houses to back out into that road so that the speed wouldn't be going right in front of their house and then it gives them the ability to back out onto that road and then travel at a safe rate or if you had kids or something and then you could even do landscape buffers in between the frontage road and the distant traffic going north and south as well. Do you think there's room there for frontage it's a road? In pretty wide space there. But, I mean, I, I travel it often so that, I've put a lot of thought behind this and again, it would address the speed also that a lot of the residents are dealing with right now. Um, and we could look at a curved road or something that could mitigate some of these issues that are problematic today for, um, with our current I residents. I think the speed is not only a, a, a problem on Disson, but Curlew Place, since people are taking Curlew Place to Disson, and, and there's, there's, you know, I, I go that way um, almost every day, so I, I see the, the police car. <laughs> um, but I, I also think that we need to get mirrors done before we can look at that. Um, as much as that would be a great idea, um, I think that we need to focus on spending the money on mirrors because that's going to be a major thoroughfare and, and also an evacuation route, and, and we need to focus on that first. Um, but before we did anything, we definitely would need to meet with those neighbors in those neighborhoods and um, talk to all of them. But thank you. Commissioner Carr, again, thank you for bringing this forward. I think it's and bringing those, all these ideas for discussion, I think, is great. But I do agree with uh, Commissioner Kikta, who actually lived in the area, and he experienced all the difficulties that they have, how bad it is, 
traffic as it is now. And if um, and I agree that we should wait to uh, to the extension of mirrors and see how that's going to work out. And that way we don't have to uh, spend uh, designing and all the other money twice. Let's just wait for that. And um, it def we definitely have to get the residents involved and let them know what we're going to do and what kind of input we're going to get from them because they're very, very concerned. I've been getting emails from, from the residents, especially one person there, almost every week. <laughs> or 50 He's so years. concerned the way it is now with the traffic that we have on Distant Avenue. And I can imagine if we cut it through, how much traffic that's going to generate. So it's going to make it a bit difficult knowing that it's going through the neighborhood. And we have several neighborhoods that they're going to be affected by. So we need to have those people involved in a decision making. I, I agree. I, I'm not trying to do this like in the back rooms and no, get no, something no, no, done. That's so not what I'm talking about. It's, um, I think what I wanted to bring up, though, is there's an opportunity to, to look at a design mechanism to see potentially what it could look like to present to the residents to say, this is what it could look like. Um, we know you have speeding issues in this road today. Um, and if we wait to, do, to look at or, or at least start brainstorming any ideas, if distant is, or I'm sorry, if mirrors is three years away, um, and then we look at another couple years of design, we're looking at maybe 10 years before we see a potential of bringing this forward. So I, I'm just talking about, let's just put some stuff on paper. Let's talk to the community about it. Let's get it, some ideas to show this is how we could control maybe the speed on distant today, because that's not going to go away unless we shut distant down. And I don't think that's our intent right now to shut distant down. Um, but that needs to be addressed. Like I think, three of you have mentioned today that uh, the speed is a bad situation on distance. So how are we going to address it? And what are our steps to address that today other than putting the police dummy out and taxing our police force on it? Um, I'm just saying there might be a proactive opportunity here to look at if Mears is planning on going through. Just to, just to let's look at it and talk about it to say, here are some options. I'm not saying we have to get a lot of money involved here, but Ford Pinellas is willing to get involved with it. and. Um, I understand the concerns. I want to respect all the communities in the area as well. So, thank you. Are there any public comments on this on this discussion? Here, none. Do you have any other? Uh... I just want to make a comment. Uh, I like Thor Pinellas. Uh, we deal with them on the PSTA, but they do. I'm. I'm I think I have the right uh, organization in mind. There, there are so many acronyms down there, but they have some plans for transit in North County that are absolutely horrible. I'm not saying it would be for distant, but just, you know, Tell us how you just feel. take them with a grain of salt. <laughs> but they're a good organization, but I, I just would be careful about their transit plans. Just look at everything individually. Don't let them just bombard you because they, they have some very unique ideas. Thank you. And again, thank you for that. If there's no comments or questions, that concludes the regular session agenda. And we go to the stuff comments, police chief. Thank you, Mayor. Um, by the way, it's uh, police mannequin, not the police dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know police what to call him. <laughs> mannequin. 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 No dummies. No. no, there's no dummies in the police department. I'm sorry. <laughs> no comments, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I just speed right past it. I, don't even... I know it's there. <laughs> right past you it. Do you wave to <laughs> him? <honestly. laughs> we all know what it looks like. Go first. <laughs> Yeah, no comments. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Mayor, no comments. No oh, comments, you. okay. City Attorney Patrick Perez, thank you for being here tonight. Um, always a pleasure, I uh, no comments. Okay. It's still a court. I know some of you have got calls already, or you'll be getting calls tomorrow about the hospital meeting with you about an opening discussion on the lease issue. Um, the time frame that they're going to talk to you about is very tight because they want to get this item on the referendum and we have to the log is 19th but but uh what it is is you'd have to hear you'd have to hear it about this last meeting of july and the first meeting of august to meet that deadline so there's a rather timeline but it's that so they're going to be meeting with you individually this week um 
after they meet with you, I have told them we need to have a workshop um, where all you could collectively discuss this because this will probably be as an important issue as you deal with um, dealing with this leak. They have requested June 21st, which is a Thursday. An alternate date they had available is, is the 19th. Um, by that time, again, they'll be meeting with all of you within the next week. Um, if you could look and give me some direction, it'd be, a, it'd be, again, a work session between us and the hospital. They would go over with you as a group, everything they went over with you individually, and then we'd work to try to come to consensus with what that language would be if we're going to bring forward the language on the adjustment of the lease. Um, with that timetable, if we can get that work session that week of the 18th on one of those dates, um, we'll be on track to get the attorneys, both attorneys working on what we're going to bring forward. And then, of course, we have the public hearing process, the two meetings of, of what we want to put on the ballot and put on the agenda and stuff. So is the 21st, um, 21st viable first. for everybody? Okay. okay. I'm okay. Okay. Now he's in Jan. You're talking about this, like, June next 20th. week, right? The week after. What's the date? The 21st of June? Next week. Oh, next week, yes. That's a Thursday. Yeah. Thursday? Yes, Thursday, June 21st. Next Thursday. Yes. What time? 6.30 or whatever, you know, whatever. Don't make it you, early. Make it early. Okay, 6.30. 6 day, just like we normally do. Okay. 6 day. Okay. Okay. Madam City Clerk, do you have any comments? I have no comments. Vice Mayor Panther. Yes, thank you. I got to spend two weeks in Blue Ridge, Georgia, which is my dad's hometown and place I love to go visit. And they did, this is way up in the hills. I'm sure a lot of you have been there at the one point. But they actually have like these artistic fish looking, like the little tarpons we looked at tonight, little fish looking statue monuments around town. I have no clue why. Because, well, there's lakes there, I guess, but they really, you know. They, it's not a tarpon, is it? I, no, I don't think there's tarpon up there in those lakes. <laughs> <bass. there>. Probably. <laughs> I got a mouthful of lake water. I'm still trying to get over when my buddy put though though you know he just pushed me off the boat. It was very bad. But um yeah, so it's neat to see what what other what other what other what other towns do. And um yeah, I just was found it found it funny that this mountain town had all these fish monuments everywhere. So, uh, but I'm happy to be back and ready for our summer workshops and all that summer brings for our summer spring. So. Thank you. No, I don't have any comments, but the, you know who lives in Blue Ridge? I love Blue Ridge. Is our former city attorney, Mr. Yacobon. I have you go there, every other car is a Pinellas County. Yeah, he lives, yeah. He's got, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful area. Incredible how many but no, I have no comments. Thank That's you. a halfway then, I guess. Yeah. Commission Sieber. No comments. Commission Carr. A uh, couple comments. I attended a workshop. That was actually a Ford Pinellas County workshop about all over passes on 19. Uh, I know I wasn't the one vote that was for what to look at it on 19 and Tarpon Avenue. I didn't bring that up during the workshop. I just said, um, I just listened and asked about safety concerns on 19. Um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, the county commissioner was there, and a lot of residents showed up from all over the area. Uh, There's some really unique plans and some, some really cool ideas I think that they had overall for 19 and the future of 19 uh, south of Tarpon Springs. Uh, one thing I, I want to touch base on, Mark, is you mentioned that the, is the hospital trying to get this on the November ballot? Is that what the goal is? Yes. Okay. We do have a March ballot also, right? That's coming up? Yeah. Okay. So that five months difference. Um, is there, has there been any discussions about that or bringing that up uh, at all? Uh, they'll discuss that with you. A lot of it is and they'll tell you about the reason for uh, what they want to do, which involves improvements to the hospital and how they want to get on them. So that's what they'll be talking to you about in the meetings, and then we'll talk about. There's a reason why they want to get November as opposed to, to the March. So. Okay. Um, can you have someone reach out to them to take their Christmas lights down too, please? They've got their Christmas tree lit up still from our... Uh... Beth is up here around, I think. It does. Yeah. Roof. It shouldn't be. No, no. Out. This is on the tree out by the road. It still has a oh, star up on it, and it's Christmas oh. lights. So remember our event that we yeah. out there. Yeah. So there. I don't know if they're waiting. They do Christmas in July or something. I'm not really sure, but um, <laughs> it's just kind of funny that it's still there. Uh, and then for just 
I, I suppose I didn't get clarification necessarily on the miscellaneous item that we spoke on. Um, was that that we need to look at mirrors once mirrors comes through, or do we want to? Where do we stand with these two items? Do we follow up on this at a later time? I'm not sure. I, I just but we if didn't you really... listen to all the remarks, it seems like uh, everybody had almost the same opinion in, in regards to the bicycle and to the uh, pedestrian. Let's wait and see what uh, Mr. Robinson has to uh, uh, what options going to bring to us, and then we'll discuss that. And uh, in regards to the uh, distance, is let's wait till after New Year's, and then we'll look at it again. Okay. Although, like I say, like the idea of the right, I need to do up like the right of way for your plan of the roadway and stuff. Looking at what right of way, what is the power line right of way, and what's that? I I need to look at that for. So there are some things I can I can I can be looking at because that's an interesting concept with with the auxiliary road and stuff. I just don't know what we have in there. So I'll look into that and get back with you and talk with you about about that portion because that's an interesting idea of what we can do. Okay. Thanks. And again, there may be, there also, as we're looking and waiting, um, we can start talking about um, looking at from a police aspect, other aspects, um, you know, maybe some future, depending on time frame, some future traffic calming, not only traffic calming that would go if the road was to go through, because anything we'd sell to residents, we'd have to have some things, so some different ways or looking at some different options on some traffic calming, whether it goes through or it doesn't go through, we can start looking at those options too and we can discuss some of those with you. Thanks. Thank you. I got several announcements to make. On Ju uh, Saturday, June 23rd, we have the uh, Tarpon Fest Music Bash at 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. on East Court Street. We're using the other side of the, which is unique. Um, same day, June 23rd, we have the Recreation Family Double Dare Fun Night at 5 p.m. at the uh, Community Center. And we have uh, several uh, businesses that I'd like to welcome to Tarpa Springs, the uh, Tarpa Springs Dialysis Center that we're going to do the uh, ribbon cutting, I think, at some time uh, this week. Thursday. 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 The Andres Greek uh, Grill and Pan Pizza on Tarpon Avenue. Sandra. Durnbo's Creations, Tarpa Springs Pizzeria, Polar Storm, and Interstate Background Research. And I'd like to welcome them to Tarpa Springs. Um, I also returned from a trip to Athens I, when I was there. I met with the Greek Minister of Education, and we discussed the needs to uh, bring certified teachers to Tarpa Springs or to Tampa Bay area for to teach Greek as a second language. And we also discussed the Sister City programs, our education exchange, which is part of our uh, Sister City program as well. So I'm hoping that uh, in the near future we have more teachers to come here to teach Greek as a second language. Well, that concludes the regular session meeting, and it's adjourned at 8.57 p.m. Thank you.